I bet they said that nigga was snub them. How the hell he get everywhere all the time? He, he move around. <laughs> you gotta go that way. Okay. Yeah, but they, yeah, I got my, some of my subscribers in there, homie. Okay. I just got, I think, I just, I know when I go home, I'll probably go have some negative votes, because at first, <laughs> I had it where you couldn't vote, but then I changed it, because some people said they wanted to vote up on my video. Right, right. And I said, okay. And I said, I'm going to just go buy me another phone and come up with it. <laughs> yeah, that's all I do. The hell with the YouTube and them people. I wish you, I was trying to get you to get in there and get you some channels in there before that, that move, but... You thought you was invincible. Then that, that original channel said, Boop! I thought I told you! Yeah, you told me. I told you it was going to happen, huh? But that, that, did you see that video I made about Ed on spot? He apologized? Yeah, I seen somebody else had that video, too. Somebody mirrored that video. Yeah, uh, the, the guy that uh, did the video uh, defending me, I can yeah. never, I can never, you're, you're for it, I think it's... You're for it? Yeah. In fact, yeah. that ain't why I seen somebody else got it, too. Cause he, mir he mirrored it. He, 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 he mirrored it from somewhere. He mirrored it from somewhere. <laughs> Uh, his, his closest channel. Yeah. 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 There's one. There's one of these places. That's where we're at. Yeah. We're in the area now. Yeah, he, uh, mirrored the video. Yeah, but people was, uh, I don't believe this guy. Yeah, I, I told y'all he was going to do that when I called him out with my uh -huh. video. I said, he's doing it. This is your brother, Angel Snow Number 7, walking in the mall, Oak Brook Terrace, Oak Brook, Illinois, with the, with the, with the crew. Brother Super Harvey Boy, and... If only the presses knew what was going on. Yeah, I got the camera. You want to hold the camera and maybe you want to say something? No, I don't want to. I want to whoever, who's, who's going to talk about uh, Okay. Uh, uh, brother. Uh, brother Randy's going to talk about this. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. This is, uh, my name is Randy, my name is Randy Ryder. And we're out here at a museum, a black museum in Aurora, Illinois. Uh, done by a world-renowned artist named Charles Smith. Charles Smith. A black Vietnam veteran who came home and had this vision and to tell our story. However, as you can see, when we begin to, to, to pan this, this museum, it's in disrepair. And uh, this, this array, this is from the neglect mm. of the African-American community. And the, and, the, and the apathy mm. of the African American community. Um, it's in shambles. It's in shambles. <laughs> and even even in shambles, it's still a powerful testament to the struggle. Yes, sir. That we that we uh, the journey that we came through. Uh, what other people on the face of the planet would allow? their history to be defiled in such a manner. Mm. We don't even know the significance of these pieces. And as I say, this art this artist is world renowned. He is not just some guy who put a bunch of junk together. This is a world renowned artist. This guy is, is having uh, 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 whole uh, shows dedicated to him. Mm -hmm. At, at the Sabo Museum. Mm. White people know the value of this brother more than black people. The only thing, as you keep, as you keep walking, you can see the remnant of where he, or how he was telling our story. That's a shame. Why do you think these brothers and sisters, these black people don't care nothing about their history. Well, I want to add something to that. I've been in the world for 15 years. Okay. And I noticed that the African, there is no African American community uh -huh. in the rural Illinois. 
Aurora, Illinois is predominantly Latino. Okay. Okay. And there was a time in this neighborhood area, this area was predominantly African American community up until the early 80s, late 80s, I would say the mid 80s. And what happened, a lot of African Americans sold out. They sold all their businesses. They sold their homes, mm -hmm. and they sold a lot of their businesses home to the Latino community, which Latino community do not support the African American right. in here. Every time we build a com we build something, like a store or something, they don't come here, they don't buy from us, they don't trade with us or anything. So they're not really concerned about uh, the black community. As you can see, this said slave ship, slave ship at one time. Yeah. You have people come over here and, 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 and just, just destroy things and uh, uh, they just don't have no respect for this. And, and I don't blame the Latino community. I blame African Americans because we supposed to be able to have pride and, and, and uh, have some type of uh, 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 respect for things of, 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 of our uh, history. Yes, sir. This is a part of our history. And we're supposed to have respect for that, but we don't. We're too busy running around trying to buy the latest rims, mm -hmm. the newest cars, the newest shoes, and we're not doing nothing to invest in our history. Whether we like it or not, slavery is an African-American history. Yeah. Not only is it African-American history, it's American history. Every time you talk about slavery, people say, well, y'all talking about slavery, y'all talking about something bad. African slavery is American history. It's yes. part of the white and the black experience. Yes. The Latino don't have anything to do with that concept uh -huh. in America other than that ain't got nothing to do with us. Right. They're only concerned about our, their own survival. And their survival right now relies on our demise. Majority of the time, our demise is part of their survival. So right now, we're in a used-to-be black neighborhood down as predominantly Latino. Mm -hmm. well, and let, let, us, let us talk. Let us explain exactly why the Latins feel the way that they feel. The Latins feel the way the Latins feel the way that they feel because we are in direct competition. This nation needs a needs a race of willing workers mm. to to maintain their wealth. That's right. We have become too expensive we have become uh, too knowledgeable about what our rights are. See, we were, the first, we were the first source of cheap labor for this country. Any business, the biggest, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, 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 expense in any business is what? The labor. Right. If what you got to pay people, and then I'm going to tell you why we want to divorce ourselves from our history. Because it is a painful history, and nobody wants to be recognized for being a slave. Mm. You want to forget that you were dominated in that way, or your forefathers were dominated in that way. You want to forget that. If they concentrated more on what we were before we got here, rather than what we have been, see... In the United States, African history is taught as if it began when we got to these shores. Right. We had a rich history where we had the world studying at our feet mm -hmm. that is never mentioned. Most people don't even know that the Madonna, that the Catholic Church, when he, they have white pictures of the Madonna. But the Madonna is in a little place, a little town in, in Poland where the Pope goes mm -hmm. and she's black as the ace of spades. Mm -hmm. The mother of earth is Africa. We, but see, we have been convinced. See, we had two. We had, a, we had the European at one time was the only bridge between the two cultures. Mm hmm he went over there and told them that we was pimps and pushers. <laughs> he came over here and told them, told us they were savages. 
Right. Since we didn't go there, we couldn't go there. So now we don't even want to know them, and they don't want to know us. So we have got a, 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 a disconnect from our homeland. What other race of people out here don't have no connection to their homeland? Mm. We consider our homeland backwards because we are looking at it through the prism of a European society. That's right. Imagine, if you will, if all the, go get the book of inventions, look at how many of those inventions were made by African Americans, and think about what those would have, the inventions would have done had we done it in Africa right mm. here. Mm. That talent, had it been left in Africa, that talent had it been left in Africa, mm -hmm. would have built Africa. They stripped Africa of all its resources. Why do you think all of the world's resources is in Africa? Didn't didn't God the, the God or the Jehovah of the, of the Bible say that all that I that I have created is for you and His dominion? That's why everything that exists on the face of this planet you can be fa can fa be found in its raw form in Africa. Mm -hmm. But please stop calling people Jews. Mm. There is the Jews that we think of. Judaism is not a race. Mm -hmm. It is a religion. Right. Absolutely there is right. no such thing as a Jew. Right. As a Christian. Mm -hmm. As a uh, Muslim. Mm -hmm. Muslims can be black, white, or green. Mm -hmm. Jews can be black, white, or green. They are not a race. Mm -hmm. They are a group of white people who, <laughs> who practice Judaism. Uh -oh. That's what they are. <laughs> teaching. See, teaching. See, now check this out. Now uh. we're going to get biblical on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Look in your Bible. In Genesis. I'd rather not, sir. Well, <laughs> 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 you can tell. You can, you can, you can, you can, see, when your mama tells you to read the Bible, <laughs> you can show her how it's been misinterpreted. I want to show you something. To prove my point, anytime anybody doubt that the, the cradle of civilization is African, this is what you tell them. You go to Genesis, and there's a river called Gion, G-I-H-O-N. Mm -hmm. That river, right now today, still runs through the middle of Ethiopia. Mm. Ethiopians do not even sanction those so-called Jews. Uh, 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 in Israel, right? That inhabit Israel. That's right. Cause in their mind, the true Jews are the Africans. Mm -hmm. See, and so since we, since we, 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 uh, how you doing? Well, since, since, since we know that, if the river still runs through, see, that river's not changed. That river's in the Book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Genesis means what? The beginning. beginning. So if it's in there in the beginning, if it was there in the beginning, it's there now. That's the origination. That's the origination of Earth. Let me give you some other, some other things. The so-called Middle East was a creation of the Europeans. Mm -hmm. All they did was drive, is, is, is create that Suez Canal that separated the main body of Africa from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they call that the Middle East. Huh. That was ancient Kemet. Mm -hmm. That was the upper and lower Sudan. That was Ethiopia. Greater and, 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 and Ethiopia minor. That is where Timbuktu, Songhai, mm. and all the other organisms, I mean, uh, 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 uh Precursors, mm -hmm. because most of the knowledge that these people have is a duplication of what was already uh, thought of by your forefathers. Yes, sir. Now, if you don't believe me, there's a book called The Secrets of the Nile Valley mm -hmm. by Anthony Brown. It will show you where the CBS I come from. Mm. Where 
to denote all the things that are on the deck of your dollar, your dollar bill come from? How come you got an obelisk in your Washington Capitol? Mm. That is the symbolic of Osiris and Isis and the, and the, and the removal of the fallacy. Uh, 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 that's what that symbolizes. People don't understand what really is going on out here. Mm -hmm. You've been miseducated to believe that you were inferior because if, they, if, you are, if you think you're inferior, you will behave inferiorly and we can capitalize on your lack of knowledge. Right. Your ignorance of, of self is the biggest problem that you have mm. because it determines how you see the world and your place in it. Mm -hmm. If you think the reason that these people they don't, now you know it's a person. If you're a black person in an all-white situation, you shrink to the corner. Hmm. If you're a white person in an all-black situation, you step up front and you think you, by virtue of being white, have the right to leave. Mm -hmm. You have a right to leave. Mm -hmm. You are, are destined to leave. He's going to resist in everything because he thinks he's innately smarter than you. He's been convinced of that. Mm -hmm. But the problem is not that he's been convinced of that. The problem is you've been convinced of that. Mm. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Randall. And this is why this is in shambles. Oh. This man and all, this is brother, uh, the night, 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 uh, and just nothing left seven. And uh, I'm here in uh, Chicago, uh, Aurora, Illinois, and uh, having a good time. Uh, as you know, I'm up here visiting uh, my student at Minister of, of Action, uh, Andre uh, 96, and uh, we are on our way to uh, visiting the brother you know of as Harvey Superboy, but prior to that, uh, Brother Andre introduced me to a brilliant brother, I had a chance to speak to him for the last few minutes, uh, represents a consciousness uh, for the law, uh, having the same similar type of experience uh, with your brother, and, and hopefully talking to this brother here and Brother Harvey Superboy, we can combine our forces together uh, to uh, be stronger. Because as you know, alone, all of us are brilliant alone. All of us are strong alone. But there's nothing like the unification when people come together it makes everybody that much stronger. And when I introduce to you, introduce to you this brother, you hear that dynamic, you hear that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding, because see, Brother Charlie can't do it all. There are things that Brother Charlie just don't know or I just can't be concerned with. I have, like I talked to us yesterday with Brother Andre, all of us have our gifts. So I would like to introduce to you this brother so he can share with us, not only right now, but later on, Hopefully, I'll be able to share the wisdom of this brother with you on the Reality's Temple on Earth Ministry. So with no further ado, I want to introduce to, to you from keeping it from the Keeping It Real Law Project, Brother Randy Ryan. Brother Randy. How you doing, my brother? All right, sir. Yes, sir. Glad to see you. Glad to This is uh, this is my audience, Reality's Temple on Earth Ministry. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Randy Ryan. I'm from Keeping Real Law Project. And what I do is I teach our young, I teach them primarily our young men, or I teach our community as a whole the constitutional rights, the constitutional amendments that guarantee those rights, and how to effectively engage with law enforcement officials. Uh, it is imperative that we teach our children this vital information to keep them out of the clutches of the prison. Yes, sir. If we do not teach our children to change the way we act, we will continue to do get the same treatment that we've been getting uh, here before. We need to come up with a different strategy to to uh, address this issue. We are the biggest population in prison, and most often the, uh, the most likely victims 
of police misconduct and or brutality, yet we have known nothing good about the system that devils us and that we're going to be facing. That's why 95% of all criminal defendants plea bargain. Good. Because they would rather plea bargain than face a system that they don't understand. Don't have no knowledge. And, 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 and people, innocent people are beginning, are, innocent people are, are pleading guilty to crimes they haven't committed simply because of that fact. They don't have access and also don't have access to quality, uh, competent and affordable legal assistance. That is the formula for current incarceration in the United States. It, the formula is very simply weird. You see and it? We call it weird, not the one you sit on. Mm. R I R. Race, income, race. Mm. Race determines how much contact you will have with law enforcement officials. You live in certain areas because of where you live and who you are, you will have a lot more contact with law enforcement officials. Income determines your ability to uh, uh, your ability to defend yourself against the charges that you brought against you. You, you can't uh, you get as much justice in the United States as you can afford. It's not about it's not always about race. How many of us don't think OJ did? Mm. But he walked out of court. Mm. He was able to, 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 to hire the best legal lives in the country. You going and you going to be saddled, in the most part, we will be most of the with the, with the uh, public defender's office, whose mission is not to, to, to defend you. Their mission is to do one thing, or do what they have two missions to relieve the backlog in the court. That's why they were created. Mm -hmm. The plea bargaining system, that's what it's for. They could not possibly afford to try everybody that they that they were as a crime. Yes. It would break the it would break the system. Right now it break the system. So they created the plea bargaining system to aid black male, African American mm -hmm. males, and people of color into taking plea bargains by determining by making sure that they uh, by making sure that they plea bargain. It's the same, it's a new twist on the story. It's during slavery when a, 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 a male would commit an offense, they would string them up outside and make everybody come watch them get whooped. Hmm. The reason they did that was they were still fear. Well, they do the same thing with the plea bargain system. They do the exact same thing with the plea bargaining system. What they do is they offer you uh, uh, less time for, in exchange for you uh, uh, giving up your right to trial by jury and the right to face your accuser. Okay? And if you don't do this, then you get twice or maybe three times as much time simply for defying the system. Mm -hmm. Because the nature of it because the nature of the crime has not changed. Nor has your prior record. If your case is worth six, six, six years in a plea bargain, why is it now worth 18 years because you're in the trial? Mm -hmm. Even though nothing has changed except for your right, for you to demand your constitutional right to demand a trial by jury and the right to face your accuser. That's it. Oh, uh, that's, in, in a nutshell, this is the reason why we need to address this issue. We need to teach our people how to defend themselves against any charges, how to, to uh, keep their rights intact while on the streets. Uh, we're often the victims of uh, harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us have been to prison. When you went to prison, you had to account for your whereabouts 24-7. Why is it that when I got out of prison, if I go in certain neighborhoods, the police can stop me and ask me where I'm going? That ain't really none of their business. Mm -hmm. I have the right to life, living, and pursuit of happiness as, a, as any other citizen. I'm an American citizen, yet I'm being treated as though I do not belong here. Right. I am being treated as that. And the reason we, we're treated as though we don't belong here is because 
This was not intended for us. When this nation was created, we were three fifths of a human being, one not to build a horse. Right. So, therefore, they never intended this Constitution to include us. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. They made the mistake <laughs> of letting us know that the Constitution does uh, have us. I mean, it does protect us. Although we don't know what protects me, the Constitution provides us. That's what I try to teach people. Right. Is to, is to, look, to, to, to use the Constitution as a defense weapon rather than uh, trying to beat a system who, with uh, physical force that has superior weaponry and numbers. Mm -hmm. That's a suicide mission. Therefore, if we're going to be subject to these laws, then we better learn. Yes, sir. Learn the law.
All right, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Just want to make sure this stupid thing works. That's good enough. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this uh, internet program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, uh, Vimeo, MySpace, and make sure that you Friend me on Facebook as Sheshaw Tenobeta. I am, not you, me. I'm known as the mighty, 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 ah, uh, Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to uh, thank you for joining me live from Aurora, Illinois. Or Chicago, however y'all want to view it. Chicago, Aurora, Angus Snub Nuff 7 in the house. And uh, we live and in person. And uh, I have special guests on this particular special broadcast of the Realities Temple on Earth. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, my guest. To my left here, I have my brother, uh, Randy, Randy, no, oh, Randy Ryder. Yeah, Randy Ryder. It was on the top of my tongue. And I just forgot. I'm so sorry. Randy Ryder from the from uh, Keeping It Real Law, the Law Project, right here in Aurora. And also to my right, y'all, y'all know it. It's too late. We together now. It's too late now. Y'all, it, it, it's almost a done deal for you. I know some of y'all might get upset. Said, no, them two niggas can't get together. Oh, no, Lord and Jesus Christ. Y'all that don't believe in God, you're probably screaming for God now. This is the real man of steel. Brother Harvey Superboy. There we go. All right. Yeah. And, uh, it's another room. Come on in here. And my assistant minister, Andre, he don't want to, you know he needs to sit in here and be part of that. And brother, my assistant minister, there you go. This, this room is sort of crowded. Y'all have to forgive us a little bit, but pay attention. We got a lot of information for you. And, uh, and uh, we hope that this hour, maybe perhaps hour and a half, becomes very informative. And what is more important is that y'all see this power and this strength here. And when you hear these voice, brothers, these, these voices, these brothers talk, oh, man. Woo! So, you know, if you're looking at this on video, which chances are you are, because I mean, we live. I'm going to have to put this down on YouTube or Daily Motion somewhere. You know, before you get started, get your popcorn, soda, whatever, or your beer. <laughs> you know, some of y'all do that like that. And then uh, we're going to have a nice conversation here. Uh, we're not going to be talking about uh, chasing women. We're not going to be talking about getting the hit off the old weed. We're going to be talking about those issues which pertain to us, which makes us which makes to help our community and we as an individual improve ourselves. Now, I don't really know, we really don't have a subject matter. We're just going to talk, but I just wanted to kick the, kick the conversation off uh, with Brother, Super, uh, uh, Brother Harvey Superboy and myself. And, and, and Randy, he's going to come in too, but we're going to kick this off with uh, a subject that's, that's near and dear to the YouTube community. And uh, myself and, and brother, brother Harvey, I would like for the friends and the subscribers of the Realities Temple, Angel Stuffing Up Seven, and the subscribers and the friends of Harvey Superboy, y'all know we're in trouble on YouTube. And the reason why they do not want our voices on YouTube, well, you you guys already know, so I really don't have to explain. It. But we need your help to stay alive until we get stronger. We need y'all to mirror our video. We need y'all to set up channels just for us and put these videos out there. We need to put out as many channels and videos as possible so these false flaggers, if they want a false flag, make them work. Make them work 24 hours a day. Show them that they will not, this little kitty action, this cowardly, trashy action that they do is futile. It's not going to mean nothing. Every time, matter of fact, what you're going to do is make it worse for yourself because every time you turn around, there's my pretty face. There's Harvey's face. You said, it's too many of them. This flag, y'all. I want, I want to run the knuckles off your hand. 
That's the way we need to do it. So brothers and sisters, friends and associates, those of you who know that we are not haters, that we are not racist, and all these old crazy things that they said that we are. We are just brothers that come together, and there are also sisters out there whose channels getting flagged. We are just people coming together, trying to talk with one another so that we can attempt to solve the problems in our community and become better individuals ourselves. Because that's where it starts. Matter of fact, if you don't become a better individual, we can't have no effect in this anyway. You have to become a better person in general. And we can then that 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 rolls off into the community at wide. But uh we're gonna I'm gonna kick this off. If Brother Harvey wanna talk about this particular issue or anything that he chooses, and we're gonna go around this room and whenever any of y'all other brothers that's that's in the that want to jump in the conversation or kick something off, you know, you just be glad to. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm tired as hell. I've been here, but I've been enjoying myself. So y'all sit back, relax, I'll do it with you. And uh, we're going to kick this off with, with, with Brother Harvey Superboy. And thank you for uh, uh, coming to the rally this time. Thank you, Brother. Um, first, I want to say thank you to those who have supported me, supported yes, us. us. Let, me, let me say support us. When I started doing these uh, videos, it wasn't with malice or any financial motivation. It was doing it because for years I've seen our people be manipulated, whether it be in print, whether it be music movies or even in school and what kicked it off for me that I had kept seeing stories where people who were white and I'm going to say that they were racist yes. because you lie on a black male or black woman when it comes to that crimes where we're basically lying saying things about our people and the reaction from the media and from the citizens were very visceral matter of fact the very first video I ever did was about Bethy Starro if you don't remember who she was she was the 26, I think 27 year old woman. She was deaf. And I want y'all to rem remember this part. She was deaf. She put ass on her face and yeah. said a fictitious black woman did it. The media, YouTube, and y'all, there's some videos still out here on YouTube about it, called black women all kinds of derogatory names. And even some, and I, and I use this term loosely, brothers was joining in, piling in on it. Knowing that black women and black men for the last 40 years have been divided by outside forces. So when a sister heard a black man refer to a slut or bitch, all of us got lumped into that group. When I saw the reaction from Open Winfrey, because the sister was supposed to be on Open Winfrey show, but thank God some smart thinking white man said, wait a minute, if she had asked him to face the very same thing I said in my video, why was her eyes damaged? I wear glasses. I know if your face get wet, water's going to get on your eyes at some point. Mm -hmm. It's going to get it. There's no way around it. So what I did was I got off my butt and said, no, I got to speak to this because we, whether, whether we have issues with black men and black women, there was uh, people out there just berating our sisters. And from that day on, it started to flow. It just, it kept com it just kept coming. And what happened was I started talking about politics because a lot of our people have been manipulated into voting one party. A lot of us have spent our money in, in unwise fashions. So I spoke about that. But after a while, and brother can tell you, I was barely getting 30 views on my, right. on my channel right. until I just kept pushing through. Then all of a sudden I started getting the hate from the tried and true races. You know the brothers and I, I'm gonna see. I keep saying brothers, right. and, yeah, but I, I refer to everybody like that. But the, those white men and women who don't want us to have a voice, that want us to stay in the slave masters, you know, they just sit in that type of uh, place where you need to know your know your place. You can't speak about anything. I was getting death threats, and I told brothers and sisters support yeah. me, and they's like, "Oh, Harvey, you ain't getting no death threats," because at that time I didn't know enough about the video software. Right. And then after a while, I can't remember one of the YouTubers came and he said, "Why don't you invest in some of this video capture software?" And once I started doing it, a lot of those men and women was making those threats. They stopped. Huh. But guess who took their place? Self-hating black men and black women, as I like to call handkerchief heads. A lot of these brothers and sisters want to become YouTube partners. So what they do, they change the tone of their videos. They start attacking one another because people love to see black people attack each other. It's like a, a sport to them. 
Mm -hmm. You see all the booty shaking videos up here. You see the fight videos. You see the uh, the uh, the the um, black men defend their white girl when she was calling us niggas and everything. People like that. Those videos are in the thousands, even in millions of hits. But brothers like us, we just speaking about the things we observe. Yes. I be probably got maybe 400, 600, 700 subscribers. That's too much. Mm -hmm. So after a while. Brothers and sisters said, well, I want those subscribers, so how am I going to get them away from them? Mm. I'm going to go out there and make a dummy channel, or I'm going to say Harvey Superboy, or any other brothers out here like ourselves, or sisters talking about, say, he said something about black women. Knowing damn well that I never said anything black about black right. women. Then they might say, brother, Harvey don't like your channel, so he comes in, and then they want to go to super pro-black stuff and don't even understand that you have to have a... A, a plan when you talk about overthrowing the country or being a revolutionary. Yeah. So all of a sudden, everybody's jaw jacking with each other, and I'm sitting back like, you guys don't understand. We just becoming entertainment for the YouTube community. Yeah. But then when I go into a different direction and say, let me try a different way of speaking to y'all, then that's even worse. Yes. Yeah. Now the other day, if you guys don't know, a brother, um, like I said, I use these terms loosely, and on the spot, we all know him as what's that? Uh, painless. We know he made a series of videos. Attacking the Trayvon Martin, attacking other brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, he joined people who are racist in getting our videos false flagged or terminated. Well, I came across a video another uh, YouTuber had mirrored where he said he admitted he was cooning and buffooning. He was tap dancing. And one of my subscribers um, to my new channel said, you know, you should forgive him. I said, no, that's the problem with us as a people. Every time we do something stupid or dangerous to each other, we forgive them. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't advance because we keep giving people the room to keep making mistakes. Other communities, if somebody make a mistake like that, they kick them out. No white man is going to let another white man who defended blacks come huh. back into the community. He's done. He's he's a, he's a, he's he's just trash to him. When we do something, if somebody kill, rob, or whatever, come on back, brother. We pray for you. We're going to let you back into the fold. We talk about what the man is doing, but we're doing the stuff to ourselves. If you disagree with me, you have that right. But don't come to my channel, any other channel, cursing or making threats or making it personal. If you think I'm wrong, put a rebuttal video up. Right, make video response. Make a video response. But when you don't put your image up, or you're not a consistent YouTube viewer, in my mind, you are a troll. Now, a lot of y'all hate when I say that, but let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's Some go, people. Let's go a little stronger than that. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> no. I, yeah. I, first of all, before I get started, I want to say that I thank these brothers for having me on their uh, their, their channel and for sharing this this form with me. <coughs> Normally, I do things like this only if it's a commercial, you know, for my for my program, Keeping Real Law Project. Tonight, because I, I, I've gotten to know these brothers over the past three or four hours, and I know that their heart is sincere, you're going to always have cowards mm. amongst us. <coughs> you're going to always have those individuals. We've had them. See, Stephen Fetch's grandson is live right now. Mm. Uncle Tom's great grandson is still around. They call him Michael Steele. They call him <laughs> JC Watts. They call him they call him uh, 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 Black Hollywood. <laughs> you call they call him they call him the, the Congressional Black Caucus. Right. They call him the the NAACP. The, the NAACP and the Urban League. Mm. Uh, they that's what they call him now. They go by different titles, but he still acts the same as he did in, in slavery. Remember, every every slave revolt that was ever hatched hatch was was betrayed from within, yes. not from without. It wasn't the white folks to stop Nat Turner; it was black folks yeah. to stop Nat Turner. wasn't nobody Didn't nobody white folks didn't tell on Denmark Vesey. Black folks told on Denmark yeah. Vesey. Gabriel Prosser, the first known slave revolt over here, uh -huh. was betrayed by black folks. Mm. The Black Panther Party was betrayed by black folks. Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Uh, 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 Malcolm X. Yes. Dr. Everybody. King. Dr. King. Dr. King. Everybody. Now let me tell you something. Tell us. We can no longer afford yeah. 
these handkerchief heads. <laughs> we can't afford them. In every other society, traitors are dealt with accordingly. Mm. The worst offense you can commit in the military is to be a traitor. It's mm. punishable by death. Yes. Mm. If we are a nation within a nation, why don't we have that same right to implement the punishments as we see fit? Mm. And until we adopt that, that, that mindset, we're going to have people who continually uh, disrespect our community yes, sir. And, and, and sell us out to the devil. And I did say the devil. Mm -hmm. I don't care who don't like it. Call me. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I'm yeah. Saying, I love I, it. It's my teeth white. I'm all <laughs> See, listen, I don't mince words. See, I am not trying to be politically correct. I don't care who get upset. Call me. You want a death threat, come holler at me. Yeah. <laughs> I got something for you when you come to my door. Now, leaving that off. We have been pontificating, wringing our hands, allowing other people to define us. Yeah. Allowing other people to define our struggle and what it should be, what we should be asking for. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody got the right to decide that but me. That's right. And the people who look like me. I'm not asking your permission for nothing. See, I want you to understand me clearly. I am not asking your permission to be black. Mm. I was born this way. If you don't like it, get over it. Now, we can sit here and wring our hands and talk and talk to these people as if those individuals, those uh, individuals <coughs> who are racist. You mean less than nothing to me. I don't care about you being racist. You can be as racist as you as you choose. I don't care about racism. I care about discrimination. There's a difference. Mm. See, how, what you think don't bother me. And when you start enacting policies and procedures and codes that deny me opportunity and the, and the right to participate fully in society, discrimination. That's when I get upset. Now, you may discriminate based on race, but the racial aspect is irrelevant. I don't care about the discrimination. I grew up in a household with a father that told up, that taught me it don't matter what, a, what, what, what white people think. Mm -hmm. As long as they're not taking clothes off your back, a roof out over your head, or food out your mouth, it is irrelevant what they think. They they got opinions like everybody else. You know, an opinion is just that, an opinion. I'm not out here trying to prove to you that I'm anything other than what I am. Mm. I could care less if you like me. <laughs> Because, to be quite frank with you, if you like me too much, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. Think about yeah, it. Because if who, what nation of people or what sector of society in any other society fighting against oppressor and oppressor is worried about the oppressor's feelings about what they're doing. Right. right. That is the ultimate stupidity to me. But you have some of these Negroes, in a minute, <laughs> I call them the Plug Negro Society, the PNS. Those individuals they done let in the house. Those individuals with the five and six figure salary that's, a, that's afraid to lose their position. Mm -hmm. Those individuals who get those positions and see what really ain't was really angers me with those people. It is it was the blood, sweat, and tears of ordinary ordinary <coughs> citizens like myself who got out in the street. Back in back in the civil rights era, and said, "We demand more black police officers. We demand participation for and more black this and more black that." But it makes no difference. All that happened is that they adopted the culture into which they was integrated into. They forgot who they were, mm -hmm. and now 
they are insulating white society from charges of racism. Mm -hmm. Because we can't say racism now because they in the slots. Mm. They doing the white folks bidding. Mm. But they've been trained properly in their higher schools of learning. Then let me ask you a question. Ask it. They said during slavery, they didn't they didn't deny us the opportunity to go to school. They didn't ever even, that was not even a, 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 a figment of their imagination that we would ever go to school. What did they deny us the right to do? Read. Mm. Now let me ask you a question. If you are a oppressed minority and they'll let you do anything in society except read, shouldn't that tell you the importance of reading? It's something they don't want you to know. See, if you know, <coughs> see, our people came over here speaking a completely different language. They had to learn the language from the ground up. Therefore, if you if you read and you know the, and you know the meaning of words, when the master said, "How was our crops?" See, when you said when he said "our," you would have known. That he didn't really, because the hour connotes mutual and, 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 and dual ownership. <laughs> but if you know what hour means, you know you it wasn't ours. See, he got you thinking, he got he had you working harder because you thought you you thought you had a stake in it. <laughs> See, he, when you say hour and we, master, we sit. <laughs> See, that means you feel the same pain he feels. Just like they say today, our country. <laughs> right. Like, and, and, but yet, you can't speak out <clears throat> about uh, our country. country. They put things in place now. The best thing ever happened to these people was 9-11. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it gave them the excuse to, mu to mute uh, voices of dissent. Uh -huh. All you got to do now under the Patriot Act is, 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 is uh, make a threat. Mm. And get you for sedition. And they will come to your house. You say you don't like Mitt Romney, and you say it too loud and too boisterous, or in the wrong language, they'll be deceived. Case yeah. in point, look what they did to my other channel. I criticized Mr. Obama. Yeah. They called that hate speech. <laughs> I didn't wish any harm to him or yeah. anybody else. But the fact is, when people say freedom of speech is only for a select few, anytime black people, especially black men, speak out, yeah. we are a threat. The worst thing for this country to have a black man with some education and common sense because you cannot mind fuck us anymore. Huh. That scares the hell out of them. But a lot of you brothers and sisters out here think that you can't be nothing or you think I had to go along to get along. We've been going to get along for 500 or more years. When are you going to stop going to go along and get along? I don't do these commentaries or we do these things yeah. because we want to get popular because we're not making money off this. Right. We do it because we see our people in pain. Yeah. And when they're in pain, we're in pain because we're going to interact with each other every day. I don't want anybody to be my buddy. I got my father, my siblings. <laughs> you know, I don't want nobody to like me. I like myself. But I do want to see people <clears throat> wake out of this sleep they're in. Yes. Because we got power. We keep giving our power to everybody else. I mean, think about it. You have people who come from third world countries, can't speak a lick of English. Who do they, what community do they come to? Our community. Our community make they riches. We keep saying we have no money. Wait a minute, we have no money. How can everybody come in our community and make, make a living? Get that American dream that's sold every day. Think about it. Billions of dollars come in and out of our community. Billions of dollars come in and out of our community. And, and the money only circulates once in our community. Really think about the power that we have, brothers and sisters. Don't come out here and attack another brother and sister just to gain <coughs> subscriptions yeah. or because you're afraid that one of your white co-workers might come across a video and say, hey, Tim, Betty, do all black people think that way? Do you think that way? Oh, crap, now you sweating. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to lose my job. Oh, God, he's going to he's gonna fire because he found us out. <laughs> Stop being so damn scared. If we come together, we can be an unstoppable force. That's right. Remember back in the 1960s, it wasn't a lot. Like today, they make you think like everybody across the country was holding hands. There was a small group of brothers and sisters, and a lot of them was young children yeah. that went out there and took the lead, and they said, no, you're not going to treat us like this anymore. 
That's right. But what, like brother said, some of us got these positions, and we don't want to lose them, so we turn around, and crap on the least of these. That's what we've done wrong. We got this me, me, me attitude. No other community is going to berate their people in public like we do. Right. We can't keep blaming white folks for the stuff that we can change and control. Yes. Well, well, I don't want to I take it down that time. I want to share with the people. Okay. Uh, anyway, I can just get a quick sit down for a minute. Yeah, brother. Yeah, I um, I just me for a minute. Anyway. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what I do know is that Brother Randy, uh, sit right here. The enemy, they see me all the time. The enemy <coughs> loves more than anything. See, we do the videos all the time, so quite naturally we want y'all to be able to be recognized. What what the what the enemy loves more than anything else is to deal with us on the individual level and have us thinking on the individual level. As long as we're thinking on the individual level, then they can take our direction and put it in any they can manipulate how we really uh uh um interact with one another. They want us to be separate in <coughs> mind and in, in thought. They don't want us to think on the same accord. Now, they control how we think, what we think, and how we conclude our own reality. Give you a good example. What do you call a person who speaks out against elderly abuse, child abuse, and uh, women abuse? Mm. You call them an advocate. Mm-hmm. What do you call a person who speak out against racism? You call them a racist. Now, what kind of sense does that make? Huh. Think about that for a while. A person that speak out against racist, racism, excuse me, is called a racist. Then you gotta ask yourself, who is these people uh, coming up with the standards of what is what in right. the first place? Who set the standards on what is what? So actually the people that are calling you a racist because you speak out against the racist, these are actually people that are racist themselves. That's right. They or have some right. prejudice and fears. Right. They, what, the, what the European people, uh, the, 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 the Caucasian people of the United States fear more than anything else is for black people to wake up and start seeing things for the way they really are. Well, as long as they can get you with this sleeping pill, Throwing sports, football, uh, 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 all these different rap. activities. Rap music. Rap music, oh, all oh, these oh, different no, things. No, I like to say idiot music because this yeah. ain't rap. This ain't rap. This ain't, you know, the music that you're listening to, they promote and encourages negative behavior. So now our young youth grow up thinking that it's cool to be a, a gangster and, and it's cool to talk about going around shooting people. You got young youth don't even want to listen to positive rap. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear nothing positive. Right. Only thing they want to hear <coughs> is somebody, uh, I'm walking up the street with a gap. I heard one song, my, my nieces and nephews going around singing a song. He put his mouth on me. What the hell is that? <laughs> kids don't he put his mouth on sex. me. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it, it <laughs> amazed me. I mean, I couldn't believe that I was hearing that. But see, the thing of it is... We feel that it's something great because white people glorify it from it. But see, when it comes to music and our music and our uh, talents and all these different things and our uh, 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 ability to do sports and all that, uh -huh. it's a part of a... They don't give a damn about that. They would give Michael Jordan could, uh, uh, play the ball, play ball the way he do. Only thing, they, only thing that concerns them is can they market off of it. Mm -hmm. It's all about marketing. If it wasn't no marketing to no base basketball, baseball, football, these white people wouldn't give a damn. Michael Jordan would be nobody. Brother, I'm glad you brought that. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead, he said man. said something about Michael Jordan. <laughs> when he was playing for the Bulls, everybody loved him. They couldn't get enough of him. He was handsome and everything. Yeah. Once he retired, and then retired again, and then retired again, he became the butt of the NBA, you know, joke. Phil Jackson, who Mike and Scotty and them made, because he lucked out and always got a good team. Yeah. He talked about Michael Jordan. He need to not be a, 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 a owner or a GM. Now, how did he, how are you going to sit there and tell what a black man can't be and do after he ran up that court for 15, 16 years? Right. And now since his team is losing, <coughs> he's not the great one anymore. He's not the he's not Eric Jordan. He's a he's a, a character. Huh. I mean, think about it. look how when LeBron James left left Cleveland, his contract was in any way. So if he really wanted to stay in Cleveland. He would have sat there and say, I'm going to re-up. 
But the owner thought he had a modern day slave. Yeah. He figured this nigga, excuse my terminology, is going to stay here because I'm going to throw a bunch of money at him. When he didn't sign up, he said he's a traitor. <laughs> he's a traitor. Like brother said, that <laughs> word traitor. <laughs> That's the think about what like my brother said about the word traitor. Didn't everybody turn him? He didn't rape nobody and kill right. nobody. He just made a financial decision. Now he's the most hated man in the NBA. You had Brett Rosenberger get accused of rape twice. Huh. Nobody brings it up. Huh. What's worse? Thinking a financial decision is gonna benefit you and your family or being accused of rape twice. Mm. Think about it. And, he, and he still has his status. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's considered an elite quarterback, even though he does not have the statistics to prove it. He won, but uh, he's won basically because they, they, they've had a superior defense all the time he's been there. Can I ask you my brothers a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Tupac, he was, a, he was a great rapper. Yeah. I talk to young guys about this all the time, uh, young uh, the brothers and sisters. And uh, I asked them, I said, okay. You love you. They love Tupac. I mean, Tupac is one of their idols. But I asked him, was he a sex offender? No, uh, but no, no. He wasn't a sex offender. He was convicted of the sex. Was he a sex offender? Yes or no? <laughs> well, Point blank. I want to know. Yes or no? Are is he? Were he or were he not a convicted sex offender? Yes or no? He's a convicted he's sex, sex offender. offender. But now, let's go with that. He was a convicted sex offender. Let's go. But with that. if another person. I'm not condoning sex offenses or nothing like that. I don't think, I think it's I know cool. Going with, I think I know where you're going with this. But the thing of it is, why is it that if he get convicted because you like him, he ain't a sex offender? <laughs> but when somebody across the street get your neighbor, you've been known for 10 years, he get convicted of something that happened at a bar from some remote uh, circumstances, situation. Now, so you don't have nothing to do with him. What about Mike Tyson? <laughs> he all up in he. You see him on reality TV shows and all these different things, but he's still a sex. He's a convicted, convicted sex. Let's, see what you let's, let's 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 break those two cases down mm -hmm. real quick. Because yeah. I am the legal man on the count on the panel. <laughs> for that, for but that. the thing and is, the world knows him. Yeah. They not gonna break. See, here here's my point. The world is not gonna break my case or somebody uh -huh. else. Not saying I I was never charged with that. But if it happened to me or my neighbor or some. Nobody's gonna care about breaking theirs down. Well, see, well, all see, they know you a sex offender. We don't have to do it. Right. Well, see, but but this goes to a deeper and, and, a, and a more sinister situation. In historical context. Too. And see, now check this out. Think about mm -hmm. this. Think about this. Tupac was fine when he was talking about thug thug life. He got dangerous when he started talking about white man's world. Mm -hmm. He started talk. He started. He got dangerous. When he was Machiavelli the Don. Mm -hmm. See, because he had an epiphany, he had changed his skilo. Now, Mike Tyson, this was race, pure and simple. I'm not going to say he did it or he didn't do it. We, we can disagree or agree to disagree on that. I'm just going to show you this, how. The same situation is told, it is done differently. Remember <coughs> William Kennedy Smith? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, Mike Tyson had invited a little sister up to the room, had sex with her. She claimed she, he raped, he took it, she took it, he took it, and he said he didn't. It was consensual. He got convicted. William Kennedy Smith was at a little party, took his date to the beach. She said she was raped. Again, he said, she said. Right. He went home. Same circumstances. Both parties had sex with a woman of the same race. Both parties were involved and he said she said one got convicted the other one didn't why was Mike Tyson's witness more credible than William Kennedy Smith's mm. uh, witness 
Why? Because his middle name, Kennedy. See, we have set them up as a monarchy in this country. And they were the biggest criminal family in the world. That's right, from the beginning. From the beginning. They made their money in bootlegging. Yeah. Which was a crime. Yeah. Which was a crime. And then the old But see, in the United States, States of America, America, it does not matter <laughs> how you get your money. Show you what the same, what I'm telling you about the difference. Al Capone, legendary figure. Mm -hmm. Larry Hoover, gangster. <laughs> <laughs> They're the same thing. Right. But <coughs> why is one on the movie shows and in pictures and the other one buried down in a basement in Colorado? Hmm. They did the same thing. Huh. Larry Hoover made the mistake of gaining political power while he was in prison. Mm -hmm. He put 100,000 GDs on the street and elected that Aunt Jemima, Carol Mosley Braun. Hmm. That's how she got elected. Hmm. And didn't know nothing. When they saw that, Mayor Daly got scared <laughs> because he's a closet clansman. Just like his old man. Just like his daddy. He said, oh no. That, excuse my language, that nigga got too much power. Mm -hmm. He got to get the hell up out of here. Listen to me. Now, why can't Larry Hoover exchange his, uh, his criminal capital for political power. Ain't that what the Kennedys did? Mm. Mm. Every black person, when I was growing up, I'm in, I'm in my 50s, <clears throat> had a picture of John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King in the right. middle, mm -hmm. and Robert Not Kennedy on the other side. <laughs> the dumbest thing I ever seen. Right. And they don't even realize that they were dragged kicking and screaming by King. Just sending them troops down there. He put their feet to the fire. He just kept pressing until he made them do something. Let me interrupt for a second, brother. A lot of people don't know that Robert Kennedy gave Jagger Hoover the okay to wiretap Malcolm, huh. Martin, any other black person who spoke out during the 60s. Mm. Matter of fact, Robert Kennedy gave him permission to do the techniques he did. Mm. This is why. The FBI, the Chicago Police Department, other municipalities was assassinated Black Panther Party members because those brothers got, they felt the law. They, they realized, right. hey, we, they're not the only ones who carry guns. We can have it for protection. Uh -huh. And they started to use it against those men and women who crawl their ass into our community and have their way with our people. And then, as they used to call them, the pigs uh -huh. got scared. So what happened was that Ronald Reagan in California, when, they, when the Black Panther Party marched to the state capitol, they changed the laws of gun ownership. This is why here in the Chicago area, well, within the city of Chicago, before Mayor Daly got out of office, he made it tougher for Joe Q. Public, like me and you, to own a weapon. Even if we have it in self-defense, you can go to jail. Mm. The criminal had to be in the house on top of your ass <laughs> to do the crime <laughs> and before you can do anything. And even then, you're going to have a problem. But let, let me tell you something about the the... the the mindset of, of white folks. Mm. We have a love hate, we have had since we've been here. We have mm -hmm. a love hate relationship with them. Mm -hmm. We hate them for what they've done, but we love them because we've been taught to love them. Right. Mm -hmm. And to, even to our detriment. Yes. Now, this is what I want to say to you. Now, we're talking about these people who, first of all, we sit up and praise people and we don't even know what we're talking about. Mm. The, the, 
the, the next guy that we, the one, next white man that we fell in love with, Bill Clinton, the, you know, the first black president. <laughs> you know that? Bank or white. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know the first black president, the one that ended welfare, that, that created, that, that had welfare reform. You know yeah. the one that created the anti-terrorist bill that, I mean, uh, uh, that, that limited <clears throat> habeas corpus and the, and the appeals process in, in, in the federal prisons for death row inmates. You know, that guy. Three strikes, nail. You know, mm. you know all that. You know, uh, uh, NAFTA. NAFTA. You NAFTA. know, all that. As far as black people are concerned, Bill Clinton is second only to Ronald Reagan. Mm. More people went to jail under Clinton, black men went to jail under Clinton that has been in this entire nation's history. Thank you. <laughs> Now, y'all still run around here because he donned some shades and played a <laughs> saxophone well, calling him, McDonald's. Uh, and, <laughs> and got his got his dick sucked. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Uh he's a black president. Hillary. <laughs> you know, now, here's what I'm saying to you. Before you start talking about people are heroes, you <laughs> need to know who the hell you talking about. That's number one. Number two. Start making your own decisions right. about who your heroes are. Start thinking for yourself. Don't let nobody tell you who the hero, who your hero is. Right. Well, you should love and respect. They want. They got you idolizing people who have special talents. Mm. Michael Jordan was an exceptional basketball player. Yeah, he wasn't no hero. <laughs> He's not a hero. Michael Jordan, I'm, I'm going to say it again, Michael Jordan was the greatest man ever lace up a pair of jumpers, but as a man, as an African man, he was a colossal failure, and he, has, and he has been since his inception. Let me just go by, let me just tell you about your hero, Michael Jordan. Tell us. Tell us, man. <laughs> when, when these children in the mid 80s and early 90s were killing each other about his sneakers. <laughs> and the starter jackets, that's what I'm forgetting. And that. the starter jackets, right. Yeah. Yeah. And his sneakers, he sat on the sideline and wouldn't say nothing. But when his handlers, Nike, because of the bad publicity those shooters were, those shooters were given, their product told him, boy, get your ass out there and make a statement. Mm -hmm. He got out there and he made a statement. He, a lukewarm one. Mm -hmm, I remember that one. <laughs> he said what he actually did was an Obama. He put the blame on us. <laughs> he said the parents of black children should teach their children to value life over gym shoes or material things. Spoken like a millionaire. <laughs> now, next thing, in the 88... <coughs> or I believe it was the 88 election, 88 or 92 election, the most racist, most virulent racist left in the Senate, Jesse Helms, oh, yo. <laughs> was being challenged by a black man, Harvey Gantt. Mm, I remember that. And they came to Michael because he was North Carolina's favorite son and said, Mike, throw your weight behind Harvey Gantt. You know what his response was? Republicans buy right, shoes, shoes too. too. <laughs> so and we break that down so they can. Oh, in other God. words, I'm not gonna harm my sales <laughs> to white Republicans or white Republicans' children because that's who was buying them uh -huh. to support a black man in a racist country like this in the Senate. At the time, there were no black men or no black people in the Senate. Mm. Mm. It was 100% white, like it is now. Mm. 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 Now, Democratic president. <laughs> now, black Democratic president. Not, last but not least, when his father was killed, <laughs> and they treated his father's body 
They couldn't even perform an autopsy on the man. They cremated the man before they even notified the, the, the victim's family. Hmm. This is what happens to black people all the time. Right. When, when they're, when they're uh, found unidentified, there's no effort made to find out who they belong to. They just dispose of the body. <laughs> he had a chance to speak out on that mm -hmm. because it happened to him personally. Right. And he was on top of the world as far as the media was concerned. Yeah. He said nothing. Michael Jordan, as an African American male, is an abject coward. Mm. Some of these talking, all these talking heads on TV. What good is having a black sportscaster if he don't do nothing to regurgitate the same bullshit huh. that the, the white media does? Mm -hmm. Stephen A. Smith. Mm -hmm. no, that was, that was Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> uh, 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 any of these. Uh, Local anchors, mm. Jim Rose, uh, mm -hmm. all these individuals who uh, the only black sports writer that really has ever, and now Barkley has become a joke. <laughs> you but made a joke, yeah. But he's one of the few people that will actually say, will tell the truth when, 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 when they picked on that. That brother from Buffalo to head that Auburn program down there, he spoke on it. He the only one said it. Out of all the black sport casters, out of everybody, and he took the heat for it. I do not, I think Bar Barkley is a buffoon. <laughs> but he got the courage to say what's on his mind. He done made so a lot of outrageous statements, according to them. Right. But brother's been secretly on his other end, like, yeah, find it. Somebody said it. We gotta stop that. See, this is what this is why this medium is so important. Yes, sir. <clears throat> we do not have a way to disseminate information in our community mm. from our perspective. We're always looking at the news through somebody else's prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a different world view. That's right. You know, brother, let me interrupt for a sec. When you said something about news, if you have y'all noticed on television, they get a very attractive sister and put it next to a white yeah. older man yeah. or, or a, a person of another ethnicity. Then they, if a white woman loses her looks, they put it next to an older black man. The <laughs> subliminal people understand this stuff. Like when you was talking about Michael Jordan, Round, round where the Bull Stadium was the United States, United Center now, it's be Chicago Stadium, predominantly black community. Mm -hmm. I remember little black kids would stand outside and wait for Michael Jordan to come out and sign autographs. He would bypass the black kids, go to the white kids. <laughs> His basketball camps were set up in white areas, but it was the black kids yeah. had the posters on the wall. It was the black kids who emulate, still to this day, emulate yeah. him. Then, because of Michael Jordan, Open Where If He Bought Tarpro Studios, Red. Like two, no, about three streets over, if that, on Warren, around Warren Boulevard or something like that. You know what they did? They helped to speed up the gentrification of the community. People own homes, homes mysteriously caught on fire, taxes went up, mm. or they or they shortchanged them, especially if it was elderly. They said, well, your home was only worth 25000 when These people had mansions, yeah. gray stones, give them 25000 for a home that probably go for two, three million today. Those brothers and sisters sold, sell us out every day. Right now, yeah, the other day, if y'all been following my videos, Mr. Obama did something. He came out for same-sex marriage. A lot of people say the black community is most homophobic. That's not true. Have you ever been to black church? You see nothing but gay men and women. We see sisters and brothers walking down the street gay all the time. We don't bother them. I mean, you might have a few idiots that do it, but those yeah. are them. What Mr. Obama did was he told the black community, I don't care about your issues because I can talk to the Jewish community. I can talk to the Latin community. I can talk to white women, and I can talk to the gays. The moment like we about to say something, I'm not the black president, I'm not the special interest president. What makes them more American than us? Mm. Here it is, the gay community just started really putting their money together the last 10 years, and I commend them for that. That's something we should have been done. But they, the, he did Don't Ask, Don't Tell. He did Doma and the Hate Crime. They said that wasn't enough. They said you got to come out and say something. He wouldn't. 
his vice president and secretary of education went off script the other day. So he had no choice but to come out. Mm. So that should tell you right now, as black people, we got a we got a voice. We came out 98, 99% to vote for this man. Don't let nobody tell you that white Americans did it. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't be bitching him on like, uh, two months after he got in office. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have no birthers or tea party. And that's a cute term for racists. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. That is the that is the new white citizens council. Yeah. That is all that is. You, they can sit up there and talk that smack all they want to. The whole problem with Obama's having with this obstructionist Congress that he's dealing with is because they're trying to take that seat. They would rather see the country go down the toilet than to let a black man succeed. See, because if he lead them out of this depression, he put the country back on 10, guess what? You liable to elect, uh, elect another black woman. And in another. Mm -hmm. And another. See, because you didn't have white men running this country since its inception. Yeah, right. and, they, and, and they are responsible wholeheartedly for the condition of this country today. Yeah, they want to blame other people. They call you thieves. Now, let's, let's just show you what kind of mentality we're working with. Here's people who stole everything that they had. <laughs> They don't have shit of their own. Right. <laughs> their language ain't even theirs. Mm. You know can't go into a you can't go into the the to the to, to the, the, the the dictionary. I challenge any one of you talk about the language. To go in the that's what I'm saying. Challenge, I challenge each and every one of you within the sound of my voice yeah. to go into the dictionary and find me a word that originated in America. <laughs> It's going to be Old English, <coughs> German, French, Latin, Latin, yeah. etc. Yeah. There is no American word. Yeah. But you speak, but they tell you it's American language. Yeah. Ask to any people that come over here. This language is harder to learn than any language in the unit in the world. Mm. Because it doesn't follow any particular rules because they have exceptions to everything. See, there's an exception to every rule of our English language. You know why? Because our language is not ours. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to fit other components into it. That's why you have this situation. And you know, you said that about the language and, ed and stuff. It goes back to education. Like I say, learn your history. This is why they want to keep certain things away from us. Yeah. Because after a while, we stop putting two together. Because the worst thing they, if they, if they had, if science ever caught up with science fiction and they was able to build a time machine, we'd be fucked. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. Worst thing they ever did was allow some of my brothers and sisters to learn how to read. Yeah. And now they're paying for it. And they're like, oh, damn, they're they reading this. They're discovering this. <laughs> See, like right now, the brothers in this room, right. we all got our common experiences and stuff, but we all know, know the game. Yes. We've known, like your brother said in the beginning of the video, you pick up, read. Uh -huh. You got to read. Read. You have to understand, words mean something. This is why white folk, when they talk about, oh, God bless America, they wave the flag, they like words. Because they say, President Obama seems aloof because he used to people message your mind telling what you want to hear. See, we get we get an orgasm off words. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we do. Well, see, there was a reason why the only prohibition during slavery was read. Mm. Think about that. That is the only thing they actually forbid you to do. There were other things that you couldn't do. But the most serious offense. Reading. Reading. And not only for you, but for their own population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they taught you to read. Mm -hmm. And see, they didn't just leave you alive when you read. If you read, they killed you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you can read, you can do what? Mm -hmm. Teach me to read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the knowledge of reading going to die with you. And anybody who's got the mindset to teach you how to read, we're going to eliminate them too. Mm -hmm. Look, we have had the Willie Lynch letter for a, uh, uh, for for about 10 or 15 years, maybe 20, I, I, I forget. Mm -hmm. But we have never actually broke it down mm -hmm. and applied it to the day. 
See, now I'm going to give you a brief lesson because we don't. the time does not permit me to go into it in depth. But I'm going to give you the eighth and again. Speaking of time, I'm going to cut you off. We're going to take a slight break and go into the last uh, half of our show. We're going to take a slight break. Oh, yeah, because I was going to give to him on that. On that oh, I, know, I was coming right behind you too, brother. Yeah, well, as I was starting to say <clears throat> about the Willie Lynch, before we had to take our intermission. Yes, sir. <clears throat> we don't even realize that really li we are living Willie Lynch as we speak. Yes. Now I'm going to give you a few facets of the Willie Lynch letter that make that are of particular importance. First, the reversal of roles. Mm. Those of you who believe in the Bible believe that man is the head of the household. And that man is to his job is to provide and protect. So if you live in a Judeo Christian society <coughs> and you are a male and not allowed, I didn't say wouldn't, I said not allowed <laughs> to earn the money to take care of your family. According to this society, where we live at, you are less than a man. Mm. Now, so once he took your masculinity, I will say that that's his words. That's his uh, take on it. When I say that he took your masculinity, nobody can take your masculinity and give it away. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that according to him, and his definition of man, you got to remember, when you're in a country where people own the language, they define it and define things the way that that's in the best interest for them. Mm -hmm. So, they say they bred you like horses and livestock. They never allowed you to commit to your female partner because he had ultimate domain over you and her. That's right. Therefore, you couldn't provide because you were a slave. You couldn't protect because you would die. <laughs> so, you would protect one time and you wouldn't protect no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now, since you can't provide and protect, now your woman is out there with that wolf. That same wolf that used to come in your slave cabin. That same wolf <coughs> that used to mess with her in the house when she was uh, 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 performing her uh, uh, domestic chores. Huh. That same guy, when he got her in his workplace, <coughs> he did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, after he reversed the roles, see this is a self-perpetuating situation. Because if you look at the paradigm in our community, our women <coughs> are the head of household. They raise the girls to be yeah. in, to be independent, mm -hmm. and they raise the boys to be dependent. Mm -hmm. uh. See, when he don't, and then she raises him to be non-threatening to white authority. Right. He's not supposed to buck. Now, she's not doing this out of no sinister situation. She's doing this because they have taken the, the diabolical individuals that they are. They have taken a mother's love and twisted it to the point where she is, she is, her ultimate goal is to protect her young and her <coughs> offspring. Right. Anything that might harm them, they, she warns them about that. And they told her when she got off the boat. She, they showed her. You see, you you heard you you read what they did to the brother that was uh -huh. strong and, and rebellious. What mother would deliver her? Tell her son to follow that example mm -hmm. and, and, and end up the same way. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. So they made the man the man what physically strong because he needed to work mm -hmm. and mentally weak. Uh huh. That's what we have the same paradigm in our system. We, have, we live the way that these people taught us to live. Mm -hmm. We got us. We got a. Or we got a a, 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 a. a culture that said might makes right. Mm 
Mm-hmm. We there's three intelligent brothers in this room. We never we would never think about raising our hands to each other in a debate. Mm-hmm. However, <clears throat> on the street you get in the debate. First thing out of individual bow, if he don't agree with you, but well, I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's just examine that for a minute. If you whoop me, I whoop my ass. Does that make what I'm saying less true? <laughs> right. All it does is satisfy your immediate gratification to shut me up. Mm-hmm. It don't make it no less true. Hmm. Mike makes right. We value style over substance. Mm. See, my big mellow over here, he's laid back, he's intelligent, this, that, and other. I'm a little more animated. Mm-hmm. So you gonna gravitate towards me? I'm the I'm, I'm cool dude on it. He on top of the business, man. Dude, raw business. <laughs> ain't nothing. He ain't no. Ain't, his what he said ain't no less true than what I'm saying. Right. It's my delivery. See, it's my delivery. I'm funny. I'm aggressive. So you, because <laughs> I'm, I'm a public speaker by by trade. That's what I do. So of course I'm gonna be a good eloquent speaker. But that don't make me no belt more right than the brothers in this room. Mm. I'm saying to you, uh, you and now the other part of the Willie Lynch letter, because I'm gonna let my brother get in here, we we running short of time. Yeah. The other part of Willie Lynch letter that we have to know <coughs> was the part about controlling the language. Mm. If I know that hour don't mean hour, what the man say? You'll be in your bed. If you teach him how to read, you give him the chance. And then they told everybody in the society to join in and make you feel inferior. Mm. Because you will pass that on to your offspring. Now, Carter G. Wilson said it best. Teacher, excuse me, you, if you control a man's mind and you control his thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. That's right. If you teach a man to go in the back door all his life, if there ain't no back door, he'll cut one. <laughs> <laughs> for his own benefit <laughs> because, his, because his education makes it necessary mm-hmm. we go to an education system that is teaching us to be workers mm. ain't nobody ever told you to be an owner mm. mm-hmm. they have always wanted us to look up to the workers mm-hmm. look that's why they publicize those big contracts for athletes. Yeah. But they're not telling you if I can pay you 120 million, I'll probably make it 500 million. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm. I don't want to be Shaq. I want to be the motherfucker that pay Shaq. Right. The owner. Mm-hmm. See, Michael Jordan got out of his body. Yeah. He owned. Bobcat, so he ain't in love with Michael Jordan no more. Mm-hmm. See, if he didn't own, he was been with good graces. And he come there and get his uh, accolades from the Hall of Fame and <laughs> stand up and take a few pictures and go on back in the subset like Bill Russell and some of these other people do. All oh, they icons, yeah, ambassadors of the game. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to turn it over to my brother because I know he's going to fill in the blanks. I, I, I had to give you the quick version. One day we're going to sit down here and we're really going to do this midnight with this uh, Willie Lynch letter. Uh, and uh, when I get through with y'all, y'all understand. See, because look, they've taught you to hate yourself. That's the coldest thing they ever right. did to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, because <coughs> the reason, the, 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 the fact that you hate yourself prevents you from liking me. Yeah. From, from dealing with people uh, uh, that, that are for your benefit. Yeah. See, you do know, 
I want everybody to understand this. You do know <coughs> that racism is merely a figment of black people's imagination. You do know that. Mm. Oh, what you, you saying? What you saying? I'm saying this here. When did we ever complain about racism and they said, yeah, you're right? <laughs> they ain't. I don't care what happened. Now they try to tell us Trayvon Martin didn't have nothing to do with racism. <laughs> <laughs> they really try to tell us this here. You got brothers and sisters out there that you believe it now. And yeah. you and, and what's what's Ooh. so and what's so <laughs> and what's so bad about it is you got ignorant mother individuals <laughs> who a, a parent. See, we got a group of parents out there. All they do is say Polly want a cracker. Yeah. If the white man say it, got to be true. Mm -hmm. mm. If you hate yourself, look, I did some time in prison <coughs> for a crime I didn't commit, but we aren't even going to go into that. What I want to talk to you about is this here, the mindset. I'm an activist brother. We went and found out that there was a new policy coming down the pipe. We're educating everybody and trying to prepare them for this new change that's about to come about. <clears throat> One of the brothers go out and ask the guards, because he worked in the in, in the uh, in the pod area where he was with the guards you know, not a lot of the time on his ship and they was cool. I'm not even getting into that. <laughs> so rather than take the word of a fellow convict who looked like him, he went and asked a European guard whether in fact what we found out was the truth. Now, if they wanted you to know, they'd already <laughs> put it out there and posted it, right? <laughs> so obviously he gonna deny that this, this 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 policy or procedure or whatever the situation is it, 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 it exists. I'm saying to you what I'm saying. What I'm talking to you. I told you that story to say this. The man that he believed his enemy mm -hmm. over his friend. Mm. Somebody in the same situation as him who has no reason to lie. Mm. You're going to validate what I said by asking the individual with the key to your fucking cell. <laughs> that has got to be the stupidest shit I've heard. Excuse my language. <laughs> that is, that is uh, to me, <laughs> what kind of mental mentality is that? <laughs> You're going to ask your enemy if they plan to implement something against you that's going to be uh, a hardship. They go. They trying to do this as a surprise. Mm -hmm. We ain't supposed to know this. Mm -hmm. Now you don't went out there and told the people we know. <laughs> now they gonna come find us, come 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 holler at us and find out how we know. <laughs> they gotta shut you up because you talking too much. Yeah. My thing is this here. This is a the same thing we have with our business uh, our transactions, mm. with our relationship with our women yeah. and our and our and our and our, our children. Mm -hmm. That is the reason. You pray a brother twenty five years old ain't got no use for a brother forty years old. Mm. Because they flipped the paradigm. Mm. We are the only only race where our children are selling the elderly drugs. Mm. Mm -hmm. Most of them guys in them lines is guys in their forties and fifties. Mm. Getting kicked in the ass by a boy fifteen years old talking about no change, <laughs> uh, 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 have your money ready, yeah. this, that, and the other thing. Mm. Now, how can you go as a 45, 50 year old man and tell that little boy to stop doing anything? <laughs> you just bought a bag from him yesterday. You talking out both sides of your neck. Hmm. I'm saying this to say to say that we must work and see what the the, the the forces that are at work against us. We must come up with strategies mm -hmm. to counteract those things. 
whether or not they're approved by white society. <laughs> See, we decide. We need to start deciding how we're going to get to the promised land. Yes. They rolled and took it. They rolled as a road to nowhere. 400 year road to nowhere. Mm -hmm. We are still essentially in the same position we were when we first came off the boat. That's right. The only thing we got is a longer leash. Mm. That's right. The only thing we got is they didn't let the, they didn't put the chain on your foot, and instead of running from the end to from to the end of the plantation, it run from coast to coast, from 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 country to country. But you gonna act and behave in a certain manner, or they gonna uh, 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 take you and, and, and make an example of you. Mm. That's what's going on with these brothers here. That's why so many self-hating Uncle Toms. Uh, <laughs> call in, write in, mm. because let me tell you something. To admit that these things are true would mean that they have to do something about it. Right. That's right. And since they're so cowardly they don't want to do nothing about it, mm. they deny yeah. its existence. Mm. All together. That's right. All together. Right. And they, and they turn around and question our manhood. But what I want to uh -huh. say is real quick. Brothers and sisters, we do this in love. Okay? Now, whether you believe it or not, at some point in your life, you're going to have that moment where you're going to say, damn, I was warned. Now, some people may take 10, 20 years. They may never take that, get that moment. But understand this. You have power to do for yourself. Stop begging somebody outside of the community to come save us. Mm -hmm. You are your own leader. That's right. All we can do is probably guide you in the right path at that. But even we make mistakes and make you. But you got to be the first one to understand. I want to make that change. Right. I don't have the answers to everything. I can only go by what I've observed mm -hmm. in my experiences. But like brother said, you got some help, self hate people out here who don't want to hear the truth because that means everything they was indoctrinated to believe huh. is a lie. Mm, and right. people hate admitting when they're wrong. wrong. This is why when I block somebody, people get mad and butt hurt because. How dare you? Because I have to speak. Well, okay, if you want to speak, like I, like we said, mm. get your camera, put your hand yeah. up, and say Harvey Subo is wrong. Right. It won't it won't hurt me. Right. We just have a difference of opinion. Be happy with but your two views. Exactly. But at <laughs> some point, at some point, I'm gonna be vindicated. Just like I told y'all about the brother that was out here attacking other black people. I say he's doing it for a reason. And he made that video admitting that he was cooning and tap dancing because he thought that's how he can get ahead for some few views. Mm. We've sold our soul out for our iPod mm. and Mercedes, mm. okay? Everybody else is laughing at us. Mm -hmm. We're the only people that will get in public and disrespect each other. Right. Here it is, you have young sisters out here, no matter what we say, we hate white, I mean, we hate black women. Uh-huh. Y'all bought into that feminism crap nearly 45 years ago. Those very same women that told you you don't need your man, they got a man. Mm. They got the children mm. or the grandchildren mm. or the house with the white picket fence. Mm. While you got four or five kids, huh. you calling your son's man. Mm. He's not the man. He's your son. Huh. You didn't flip roles. So now you're confused. Now you got boys going out here don't know how to talk or how to speak up for themselves. You got young women out here don't know when to be quiet. <laughs> So now we at odds with each other. We fight each other. We question each other blackness or manhood or womanhood. Mm -hmm. We all get our nigga moment at some point. What is it going to take for our people to snap out of? Mm. You would think after 500 years, you would say, you know, damn, it ain't working anymore. They ain't going to do it mm -hmm. until they start going door to door and shooting other individuals. Mm -hmm. if, that's, if that's what it takes, then I guess that's what's going to have to take. No, no, what I'm saying is this. They're going to come in the community yeah. and just indiscriminately yeah. and start shooting brothers. And they're so, do, they doing it right now. Right. Look at Trayvon Martin. Trayvon. 17-year-old baby. Went to a 7-Eleven. He had what is snacks. It? In Tulsa? What, just recently in Tulsa? Right? And then look what, it, Tulsa? Yeah, yeah, look what they did to that, that, that poor sister. Yeah. 20 years in jail for defending herself against an abusive husband. Right. And I'm going to tell you why they really sent her. She had a master's degree. Mm. Any black person, like I said, you got education, common sense, you are dangerous. Mm. See, they know the brother, he just going to keep getting women pregnant. Right. He's going to keep beating on them. Uh -huh. But this is going to turn around and educate her son or daughter to be something. They can't have that. Mm. 
This is why our videos are being false flagged and taken down. Because uh -huh. we're not cooning and buffooning. Right. We're not popping our necks. We're not shaking our ass. I'm going to learn that dance, though. <laughs> See, we got we to keep the light. We got to keep the light. But, you know, I, you know, we got passion. You know, and there are other brothers and sisters, not out here just on YouTube, but out in the community that does have some knowledge. Yes, sir. We need to pull our resources. We can own it's our own business. Uh -huh. See, what we've done is we give, and I'm in, if you're into religion, no disrespect, but that's a white man's version of religion. Mm. They told you to pray this blue-eyed blue -eyed Jesus and ain't got us nowhere. Right. Think about it. You go to church every Sunday, you pray and foam at the mouth and dance around and get your tithes. Monday morning, you're still in the same position. Right. Think about it. We ain't, we ain't through no planes in no building. We don't go say we want to overtake the government. We don't go in the woods, target practice, and do any of that stuff. Uh -huh. You ain't never heard a black man say they want to do harm to a white president. No, but they say they do want to do all this stuff to us. Why? And what do we do? Let's pray on it, brothers and sisters. <laughs> pray on it. Come on. <laughs> I don't be Put that religion to the side. I don't care if you're, if you're Buddhist. Your is is what Islam or right. whatever Muslim, Christian Muslim, Muslim whatever, yeah. put it to the side. You have the power. We get together, control our dollar. You hear me say that every video. Learn your history, control your dollar. What if we got a hundred brothers and sisters together and say, okay, each of us come over a hundred dollars. We can go buy a piece of property, develop our own farmland, or go buy an old building. Convert it for low income housing and we can we can get young brothers and sisters hired. They can work in the building, managing by clinging security. Uh -huh. We can go and get the churches. They get these churches get tax exemptions. Right. They can write to governments and get money to get computers and teach our children how to use the internet and, uh -huh. and create websites and stuff. We have power. But you wait for some some miraculous superhuman to come in and say, I'll bequeath this to you. They ain't gonna let no more Martins and Malcolms arise among us. Well, we we you know what I, that was a good that's good to what you're saying as far as the, when we started starting more basic uh -huh. mm -hmm. the basis of any relationship is what trust trust uh, there you go okay gotcha. I'm gonna put up a hundred dollars with you and I don't trust you right yeah. that's the true guys first right. thing gonna say who's in charge who's right. gonna have Who the money because we've been conditioned to think that yeah. way. See, what did they, what did they, what did they say in in, in, in Willie Lynch? we're gonna go back. Distrust mm. mm. is stronger than what? Mm. Trust. Trust. The young is the old. The in, is in, the white. Envy the is, is in, envy is stronger than admiration. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad you said something about the Woodland Lynch, and I'm gonna say this. Let's it's been a debate. Let's in, bring it to conclusion. Okay, I'll say this real quick. It's been a debate in the black community about whether it exists or not. Uh -huh. Whether it's real or not, right. those principles are used right now. That's right. You can't deny that. But Brother, I'm sorry you take it over now. No. I, I get on the tangent, okay. man. No, I know it's, it's cool. Well, uh, uh, actually, I'm actually, actually we, 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 we've come to the. Unfortunately, we've come to the to the end of the program. About an hour and a half, but uh, <coughs> you know, I'm real tired. But I, I've really enjoyed myself because y'all know I can talk, I can run my mouth. But this, it's not about me. And plus, I'm too tired. I <laughs> but I enjoyed this conversation, and. Uh, I would like to thank Brother Randy and Brother uh, Harvey Superboy, and of course my minister is out in the out in the forum. And uh, this was a wonderful gathering. If if this if we had the opportunity to put this forth uh, in front of 500, 100 some people, whatever, oh man, y'all be so fired up. And we're gonna end it end this on this note. For me, I'm here because I want unification with these brothers. I'm a strong individual. Brother Administer is a, is a strong individual. Brother Randy is a strong individual. Brother Harvey is a strong individual. And we are all strong individuals and intelligent in our own right. But can you imagine what that is? What type of strength or what kind of force we can become when we bring all those together? A simple analogy really, like people say all the time, is, is, is your hand. Each individual finger does its thing. But when you start bringing them together and they form their fists, fists have been known to break stone. And that's what we want to do here. That's why I'm here. Because I want to show unification with these brothers. Brother was talking about what if only a hundred? What if we can only get a hundred of y'all on YouTube that's serious? See, there's 
a lot of people that's on YouTube, y'all talk. And see, I'm here in, in Chicago. I'm here in Aurora because, see, I'm not about talk. I'm old school. I'm from out of the nation of Islam. I was out on the, on the streets, knocking on doors, talking to the people, trying to get something together for real. I'm not on no computer tapity tap, 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 tap. You know, that's not what I'm about. I'm about action. These brothers here, we've been together t today. We're talking about activity. But if you're a lazy coward, why are you watching my video? Turn, turn that video off. <laughs> why are you even watching my video? I'm looking for somebody, and the reason why I keep coming back, and, 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 and even though I'm false flag, well, I keep coming back because I'm looking for soldiers, looking for people who want action, and that's what you do, and that's what the president don't want. They don't mind you talking. They don't mind you talking, Black Power. Black Power family. I saw the Laker, but when you actually get participate with those who actually want to change the condition, then that's a whole different ball game. And see, they can't stop this. See, you can false flag this video, but you did not stop this gathering. Matter of fact, you caused it false flagging because you gave me the energy to get in the old raggedy bucket, fired up, and roll down the highway. You give me the energy. I was about to quit one time. Too. Brother Harvey was about to quit making videos one time. Y'all came and did your thing and gave me the energy I needed to keep rolling. And you also verified that what we are doing and what we're saying is 1,000% correct. I'm here to unify with Brother Randy. I'm here to unify with Brother Harvey. We're going to talk together and see how can we gain this 100 that we need. Brother Harvey said we just need 100. And just do a little bit of something. Create a little bit of success. Then inspire us to get the 200. A little bit more success. Then the 300. Then the 400. That is the millions. And that's what the enemy is scared. You should be want to be proud to have something of your own in your own hands. Look at a building and say, Brother Harvey, Brother Red, look what we did, man. That building. That school. Look at them, look at them young boys. They, their, their pants not sagging. They have respect. Honor their fathers and their mothers and their elderly. We call, we help cause all this. You should want, you should want to, to see and to know that you are capable. I always talk about separation. You should want to be able to see something that you've done without the, 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 the help of somebody else that you formed with your own mind and with your own hand. You should want to see something, even if you don't, if you want to stay in America or leave America, you should still want to know yourself that I can do this with or without the white man or anybody. I can do this. You should want to know that as a grown person. You tell your children that, get out of my house, do your own thing. Get your own car. Get your own this and that and that. But you stay in the white man's house and his, driving his cars. You can't make a car black man. You can't make uh, uh, rings. Oh, yeah, they make it for white folks. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they make them every day, but you do it for other people. You don't think you can do it for yourself? What's wrong with doing something for yourself? Having something for yourself. You know, even in a loving marital relationship, the wife wants a little something that she can call her own. This is just me. This is mine. Without my husband. I, you know, every, all of us are individual. There's a little something. We love our babies, but there's always a little something that you want just for yourself. And that's all that we should want, brothers and sisters. It ain't about hate. You should want just a little bit of something just for yourself that you can call your own. So when your children look up to you, look up so they can look up to you instead of marveling other people what they done did. No, this is what your daddy did. This is what your mama did. I don't have to hate you to love me. Yeah, exactly. Right. This that's is, right. And this is not about hating white folk. Right. That's that's giving too much power when you hate somebody. Yeah. It's about correcting a wrong, a wrong that's been done for 500 more years. Right. So those wrong. out there who are white and may be offended by this, don't. Because yeah. if actually we watch our videos and listen to our commentary, we get down on black people more than anything. Right. Because we're not going to change what you don't want to change. Right. So we do this when in love. And for the sisters out there, yeah. this is no criticism of y'all. Brothers out there, there's no criticism. But sometimes you got to take a look in the mirror and say, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. What can I do to correct this situation? You can't blame mama and daddy. You can't blame the teachers. You can't blame the white men. Yes, they play a part in it. Right. But at some point, as a young adult or as an older adult, you have to take responsibility for your actions. That's why we're here. And see, we don't That's want, why we're here. And we don't want to define this 
See, we this is the, this is what, where we get into the problems at. There's a sector of us that say it's the white man. There's a sector of us that say it's it's, it's our fault. We contribute uh -huh. to our own thing. Uh huh. It's not either or. It's both. It's both. See, we have a system that is set up. And see, and I want to clarify something. A lot of times, when we use white. We are not talking about individuals. Uh -huh. We're talking about the system that has been put in place for the benefit of the whites to the detriment of all others. Right. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about individuals. We would not be free if it were not for the abolitionists. Uh -huh. uh, so, so we have had those. There was white folks that marched with us during the civil rights struggle. Yeah. Everybody not racist. Right. Matter of fact, most of the time when I get stopped on the highway, <laughs> I stop on the highway, my car stop on the highway, it's a white person that stopped to help yeah. me. And that's why that's I right. talk about allies because right. a lot of the things that you do, the interaction you do is majority of white people because, let's be honest, they are in control of in the most control. of the things. Right. Right. I'll be disingenuous if I say the white man did this to me. A lot of times my own people have done things yes. to me. Yes. More than anybody. More than anybody. Right, right. So when, this is why I used to use the discla disclaimers in my videos. Like I ain't talking about all uh -huh. the brothers and sisters got mad at me because I'm not throwing white folk under the bus. Right. You can't do that because if you keep doing that, you're going to alienate those men and women who sympathize, who want to change. Just like that video I did with that white girl talking about I am Trayvon Martin. She told white folks, quit saying that. Uh -huh. Brothers and sisters got mad at her. We need people like them to correct their people. Right. They're not going to take us right. out there telling white folk what do because as soon as they see us that's a nigga get yeah. away from me right we're not even they're not they're not they see they're not going to validate us uh -huh. by uh agreeing with us mm -hmm. because right. what because they don't agree with all the content of what we're saying see, see why is i just want to know and I, I i'm asking you i'm gonna have my i'm gonna talk to the white viewers for just one moment and i want to understand something i'm really trying to understand this You've been telling us since we've been over here. I mean, since they, since y'all took the chains off our ankles and said, "Pick yourself up by your bootstraps." Mm -hmm. Every time we create an entity mm -hmm. to do something like that, you people get upset and ups and, and, and destroy it. Mm -hmm. You destroyed Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Talk you, about Black Wall Street. Yeah, so you destroyed it because yeah. you was jealous. Right. We weren't doing nothing to you. Nope. All we was we was in our own area. And we, but we was more prosperous in our own area than you were, so you had to destroy it. Mm, so we wanted to leave. They didn't want us to leave. So now, I said, now, what is it that you want from us? <laughs> Man, if I uh, add something to it, brother. Yeah. And go uh, ahead and bring it to conclusion. And bring bring it, this, we're going to bring this to a quick conclusion. I just want to uh, say to the, uh, the people that uh, I was not trying to be a... Uh, uh, Outside of the video for any other reason than to give these brothers the chance to uh, expound with us on uh, what what the whole mission is, what the whole objective is, yeah. and I'm learning from these brothers more than anything else, you know. So uh, I just wanted to uh, just get one point across that uh, one of the main problems that I do see is that, uh, like I said before, a lot of uh, Caucasians really don't understand that. When we try to save our people, we doing it for a, a legit and valid reason. We have a valid reason for what we're doing. That we in bad shape yes. as a people. We in real bad shape. And the only people seem to not recognize that is our own people. Mm. Everybody else of different ethnic groups see it but us. Mm -hmm. So when we try to get together and try to talk to our own people about this, you got... Our own people got problems with it. We're not saying that all white people are racist. We're not saying that all white people are prejudiced. But all white people are benefiting from the system. Mm -hmm. the system. Mm -hmm. that's right. They are benefiting from a system that's designed and set up to keep European people, European descendants, mm -hmm. in a position of power and influence. That's right. And right. we want to be able to get our people to see that. We don't want our people going out there shooting and trying to kill white people. We're not trying to uh, 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 make it rise clear. up and make it uh, right. some type of uh, 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 race, war. race mm -hmm. war or some 
what they call the amic- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I never Alamo pronounced that wrong. Right. Was it Amico or something? Or what you said? Uh, Amagaden or whatever. Armageddon. Like, Armageddon. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but we're not trying to do that. What we want to do, we want to be a group of brothers to get together and intellectually, not only intellectually, it's going to start on the intellectual level, but intellectually get together and discuss the problems and at this point, we want to be effective. We want to get out there. We want to make something happen. Right. And if we, I mean, we got to keep pounding it and pounding it and pounding it and pounding it to the point where the person don't have no other choice but to accept it. Mm. So, with Brother Ryder, Tali, and my brother Harvey, we all want to get together and do this. But we need your help. Yes, sir. We don't need you to be... Stop being scared, man. <laughs> stop be worried about losing your job. Some of y'all make video. Well, y- well, y'all know about the videos. Y'all don't want to be our friend on Facebook because you know we put our videos on Facebook because you don't want to be associated with people talking out against the system. Mm. That, just because we talk out against the system don't mean we racist people, but mm-hmm. that's the way the stigma is. If you're talking out against racism, then you racist. I had a white man tell me one day, you guys are the type of guys that keep this stuff going. Yeah. They want to put us Not all sure. in the same boat with the Klansmen. We're right. talking about helping our people. And we want to be able to be, since we're conscious of what's going on, they want to hold us and accuse us <laughs> for, uh, for, uh, for just creating the whole thing. False equivalent. Yeah. Uh-huh. Blame the victim strategy. Blame right. the, it's, the, all, it's about the victim strategy. Reverse mm-hmm. psychology. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. All you know, is. so, I mean... You gotta learn how to. You gotta learn how to get through that. You gotta learn how to deal with that. But see, with this type of thing we're doing, it takes sacrifice. Yes. You gotta be willing to sacrifice. It's a lot of people in their comfort zone. Got a nice job. Got a nice car. Got a good position on their job. Dealing with white people, afraid to speak out because they are afraid of losing their position. And if if that's where you really at eternally, and if your whole sense of source source of self esteem is in material things then maybe this ain't the thing for you. Maybe you just need the chicken jaws for the rest of your life up under these people. Because that's all they're looking at you at. They're not looking at you nothing more than that. When I was younger, in my early uh, early 20s, white people tried to draw me into that Uncle Tom concept. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know because I was raised around white. A lot of my friends was white, black and everything, but the I whites too. always told me, well, you're, you're not a nigger. You're a bl- just a black guy. You're different. Yeah. You're different. That's because I wasn't aware of what was going on mm-hmm. with these people, how they react, how they, how they, how they operate. But all of a sudden, my sister could be a nigga, mm-hmm. and my cousin could be a nigga, mm-hmm. and my father can be a nigga. But I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> it, I mean, the number one key thing is we, what we trying to do is rise up and and become more conscious and aware of what's going on and how the system works and how it's keeping us where we are. Just because you see a couple of black people in a good position out there in the open, when you look behind the scenes in these warehouses and these factories and in these businesses, you don't see no black people nowhere. Mm. They always showcase us to make it look like it's equal. But once you get into the mechanism mm. of how the thing is, then you realize that ain't none of us back there. Mm. We ain't in no part of no decision making mm. nowhere. We could be there. We could be a showcase. Mm. But when it comes to the decision making and all that, it's all white people. Mm. And we're not saying all white people are racist. But come on, if you white, you know what the hell is going on, man. <laughs> Sit up here and pretend like you don't know and I and, and for you people to be so smart <laughs> you choose to be dumb over issues you already know about mm. you perpetrating them <laughs> perpetrating the fraud I'm saying you perpetrating them you're the ones that's, that's, that's inflicting the, the, the thing you don't know you know what the hell you doing that's just like a person bumping your car and y'all driving and you see them and they see you and they hoping that you didn't <laughs> see them bump their car Nothing's like that Occupy Wall Street for years. We warned y'all about uh-huh. the jobs, uh-huh. housing market, war, illegal immigration. Yeah. You guys are paranoid. Mm. Oh, you had your nigga moment. Mm. Come, brother, come join right. us. When it can no. benefit you. When it benefits mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And brothers like us, we don't fall for that kind of crap. Right. And neither she you. Yeah, that's right. And now, I'm and, gonna say, and, on, and on that note, we, we need to close this on out. Okay, okay well, I'm going to say one thing before we close. Go ahead. One, one thing before we close. 
Nobody in this room that you, none of the brothers in this room have known each other more than a week. It is amazing, it should be amazing to all of you mm. that all of these brothers, one from uh, out south suburbs, yeah. south suburbs, St. Louis, mm -hmm. Aurora, and Aurora. Everywhere. And, and, and Aurora. <laughs> so what I'm saying, what you we, we met, uh, uh, Brother Dre and I met in a, tra in a, in a, in a, in a job, job training, training class. That's right. I was connected to this brother, Talik, mm -hmm. who in turn connected us <laughs> to Harvard, <laughs> Superboy. Now, the man I'm, still. what I'm saying is this. We are from different Backgrounds, and diverse backgrounds, different ages, and different yes. ages. We got people from thirty-six to fifty-four in here. Uh -huh. Now, if we can get along, we can find common ground. Yeah. Why can't you? And I want to say one more thing. Uh, as Andre Devin, sixty-nine, student minister of Action for the Real Simple on Earth, I want to close up by saying this: yes, that uh, mm -hmm. the key thing is we don't have to have the same likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. But our goal is one goal, and that's right. the common purpose and goal. We got a one common purpose and goal. That's the uplifting of our people. Who yeah. cares because the man in front of you got a bigger piece of cake than you? <laughs> <laughs> you still eating cake. You still eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, go ahead with that, brother. Uh, brother Talik is about ready to close up. I, didn't uh, I want to say another cake thing. Cake. That I mean, I'm gonna talk about that, brother I'm Harvey. Saying. And brother, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Ryan, Mr. Ryder, yeah. we will be conducting the interviews. I will have this gentleman, Mr. Ryder, on a regular basis, at least once a week. We'll do an interview. We'll get our analog together, and we'll conduct mm -hmm. interviews, and uh, you will be seeing more of him. And hopefully at some point in time, uh, we can get together with Mr. Harvey, and we can uh, conduct some interviews, and can we collaborate. But one thing for sure, we're going to keep together, and we're going to uh, communicate as much as we possibly can. Uh, take it away, Mr. Talik. Brother Middleton said it all. Until next time, brothers and sisters, y'all think about what you've seen here. You've seen this beautiful gathering. Uh, you cannot deny it. Uh, we can get things done, but again, we need your help. You know, we need to come together. And like Brother Randy put beautiful, all of us, we haven't known each other for the last Three hours. Well, I haven't. I just met Brother Harvey in person, and Brother Andre. I just met him in person. I just. I haven't even talked to Brother Randy. This first time meeting or talking to him. Period. And if we all can come together, then how come we can't? All of you out there can come together, not just to talk, but come together. We can put our hands together, our heads together, and 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 commit some activity to change our condition. A little bit at a time, but a little is better than nothing. Because right now we have nothing at all. So. And earlier today, Brother Talik almost slapped me, but uh, I let it slide. You know, I, I wasn't looking for no trouble. But uh, no, go ahead. Peace out, y'all. Peace out, y'all. Respect out. you. Respect oh, oh. you, YouTube. That's a silly story. <laughs> <laughs> you almost slapped me. He ain't going to put that in. Peace forever and always. In the name of my ancestors, welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this internet program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace. <laughs> I'm everywhere. And of course, make sure that you friend me on Facebook. As Shesho Tenobeta, I am, not you, me, I'm known as the mighty, 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 uh, and you're snubbing up seven. And yeah, I'm your brother and your friend. Hopefully, I, we can be friends. My name is Talik Ibn Ra. And, uh, I want you to just bear with me for a few minutes. I'm still getting over a, a slight cold. And I'm very, very tired because I did a little driving and your brother is live. 
in Chicago. You understand me? I'm in Chicago. Tired as a mother, but I made it. And I thank the creation. And we, as they say in religion, we have been blessed to safely uh, set forth upon this ground once again. And we are in the home of my brother, uh, student and minister. And y'all have seen his videos. And now you see us together. Oh man, Batman and Robin, y'all. Uh oh, all y'all, all y'all, all y'all, all false flaggers. Oh, it's, it's gonna get worse. All the enemies, it gets worse. Now you got two. Oh man, oh lord, y'all gonna have to call on God or somebody to help you, the devil or somebody, cause now we finna get busy. Not only on YouTube, but on the ground. Just like Sarah Sudan said, he said. You got to put your boots on the ground. And that's a place where none of y'all, false flyers and haters, there's nothing that you can do about that. But uh, I'm here to welcome my brother officially to this ministry. This brother, about a year or so ago, came to me or approached me and he asked me, how can I join? How can I be part of what you're doing? And I'm like, I'm looking around like, it's just me. We're a part of what I'm doing. I want to be part of that reality stuff. I want to be part of that, of all that what you're talking about. So who am I to deny this brother an opportunity to become part of something that the creation brought into existence through me for us this is not mine and I want to make that very clear this reality's temple ministry is not mine just like in religion y'all said that God uses men to bring revelations and things to the people well your God this creation has a gift for you brother and sister black man and woman the descendants of slaves in America God has brought something this creation has brought something for us that nobody else has had because if you truly believe in God if you believe in his creation he's your father or your mother why would this God of creation give you a hand-me-down it is not for God to come and bring us hand-me-downs you know I was raised in a large family and in large families we expect hand-me-downs and really there's nothing wrong with a hand-me-down, per se, because and it can be a little ruffled and torn, but you know you get a little patchwork and patch it up and, and whatever, and you don't want to waste nothing. And, and, and a lot of hand-me-down things, and some of us go to the Goodwill. Ain't no shame in the game. We go to the Goodwill, and we get hand-me-downs, and, and they look nice, and we look pretty in our used uh, brand-name goods. We, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that until somebody find out that, that they use but see y'all don't have no problem with use religion you don't have no problem with 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 these other used ideas that don't belong to you you're a Christian but we all know that that came from the Caucasian slave master that's not something that we uh, created or God personally sent a prophet to us to teach us we got that from our slave master and we're happy to wear that used material in fact it's we are so proud of that used material we have the nerve to challenge the man that gave it to us the one that he got it when it was new and don't y'all muslims don't y'all get uh all arrogant because y'all religion is hand me down too because that prophet muhammad did not come to Black people in America. Prophet Muhammad came to Arabs living in the sand out there in the desert. 
you know, and you got his hand-me-down religion. And they will tell you when they get mad at you, that's my religion. That's my Christianity. I gave that to you when you was a slave. That's my Islam. Y'all copying that stuff from Prophet Muhammad, and y'all can't even do it right. So a parent, knowing that the children have these type of conflicts, a parent, if it's possible, a good parent always try to buy new things for their children. So if God is the father, if God is the parent, why wouldn't God, why wouldn't your God give you something that's new? So that's what this reality temple ministry is about. Your God or the creation, that which brought us into existence has brought for you something that is new and you don't even want to accept it because it's, it's strange looking it's odd it's out of the norm it's out of what we're used to but that's how it is when things are new when we try to get the new iphone and the and the ipads and and all these new gadgets you don't expect them to act like the telephone from 1918 they are new they're strange some people don't like new ideas but that's how things evolve. That's how things ad advance by new ideas. But you're not ready for it. You hold on to old used material when you're God. See, God is a creator. And God in religion always is creating new things, always evolving. God never is going backwards. God is always going forward. So if y'all are believers in God, then how come you are either standing still or you're going backwards, trying to, trying to live like people of ancient times? Yeah. That's not what you are. You are not an, an Egyptian. You are not a Moses. You're not like a Jesus. You were born in these modern times, but you was given old material, these old clothes. When... Your parent is offering you something new. And some of us don't like new clothes. I don't like that kind of fashion. Now here I am going on 50 years old. And besides the sagging pants, I like some of these new fashion styles. I like to stay hip. You know? I like being on time as long as it's not filthy. You know, I don't want my butt hanging all out. Looking all nasty and and uncivilized, but I like to be, I like to be fashionable. I like being in modern times. I don't like the past. That's over with. I'm moving forward. And even an older person should move forward to the day you die. That when then once you are in the grave, it don't make any difference no more. But when you living, living, and your mind is working, and you still evolving, then you should be open mind to new ideas. Always create your mind is there for to create and evolve. So this is not mine to deny anybody from. So I have no choice. Matter of fact, it's not about having no choice. But I welcome this brother to this ministry. Not as a follower. But as a fellow administer in training. And I'm very shocked because really he's almost there really anyway. Because see, it's already in you. And the scriptures tell us these things are already in you. That which is new. Y'all Christians. I wonder if you really believe your, your own teaching. Because it says in Christianity that the kingdom of heaven is in you. If the kingdom of heaven is in you, then why are you talking about dying, going to heaven? The scriptures is telling you that the heaven that you're seeking is in you. I remember a story from the Wizard of Oz. And of course, Dorothy was always trying to go home, so she had to go through all these little trials and tribulations. And she did make some friends with the scarecrow and the lion and tin man and all like that. And then at the end of the journey, when she found out 
that the wizard was fake. <laughs> Man, that's a that's a wonderful story. See, the wizard really represents a belief in God, the almighty uh, wizard of Oz. And then when the dog pulled the curtain, it was nothing but a flimsy, silly little man pretending, trying to be something that he was not. Oh, just think about that. But above all, this wizard turned out to be fake. So Dorothy said, how am I going to get home? And so Glenda, the good witch, said, child, you had the power to go home all the time. The only thing you had to do was click your heels together. See, that was all a waste of time. Dorothy could have went home a long time ago. The power to go home, she always had. The scriptures is telling you that the heaven that you pray for, that you form at the mouth for, that y'all fall over bridges for, it's in you. It's right there. So anything that I say, this brother, he already knows. Everything that I'm telling us every day, every video is already in you. Some of you are beginning to accept that. Some of you are not because you want to hold on to these old clothes and you think that somebody special is supposed to come and guide you somewhere. Whatever the creation, whatever God gave to me, gave to him, gave to you and your children, the kingdom of heaven is in you. So if I go in the wrong path, since the kingdom of heaven is in you, then this brother, with or without me, can continue the journey. If he decides to take advantage of the gift that has been placed in all of us. A new heaven and new earth. Heaven is not supposed to be like this place. So your God in religious scriptures tell you that I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth and the former things shall pass away. This brother here is an example of the former things passing away. I don't want to be like that no more. And the marvelous thing about this, brothers and sisters, is that whatever this brother was had nothing to do with me. Only thing I can do is suggest. And I did not tell him, well, if you keep smoking, you're going to go to hell. If you keep drinking, uh, you're going to burn in fire forever and all these different punishments. No, I'm going to. I want to change my life for me, not because I'm scared of some punishment, but I want to do this because I know there's something better. There's something in me. And what is that something that's in you? It's the heaven that you've been promised for, oh, for your 400 years of suffering in this country. That's the gift that this God, that the creation wants to give to us to bring forth to to humanity because God has already tried to do that with the Muslims with the Christians the Jews they all have been given a chance to be the special people to be the ones to bring in this new heaven on earth they all have failed and they continue to fail because they have lost track and become arrogant Believing like uh, that prophet, I believe it was Abraham, who got so high and mighty, he thought that he could make a, a, a turn a, a rock into water or whatever, some type of miracle. He thought that he had that power when he did not and became arrogant. So you have all these people, they say God, but they are the ones with the power. Look what I do. Look what you hear them all the time bragging. 
Look what I did. Look what I can do. And it's not about that. So, and then they take their arrogance and they belittle the other children of the family. Some of them made slaves out of some of the other children. Some of, the, some of them have some of the little children in prison unjustly and they know that these people should not be in prison. They rape the woman. They molest the children. They do evil things to animals on this. They put them in zoos and they take the earth and try to dig every diamond out of the planet. Get every drop of oil. Destroy that which your creator placed for you to enjoy. And you, these people have the nerve to talk about that they are special. Ain't nothing special. Yeah, they are special. A special place in what you call hell. That's what makes them special. And so now their day is over. And they messing with you and messing with your mind. And distract you. Because they know that this gift is coming from us. Not only me. Listen to our talk. I don't care if they are a Christian. If we are Muslims. Well, listen to our talk. Look at the things that we come up with. Look coming out of our mind. Ain't coming from nobody else on this planet except us. Look at what we've been blessed with. Everybody always follow this black man, especially in America. When we sing, when we dance, when we talk. You can't even talk on YouTube. These suckers coming to you to listen. I didn't ask these people to come to my channel. I want to talk to my people. Those who are descendants of slaves in America, I want to talk to you. But they want to hear what we got to say. What are you doing? Because they know that it's you. You don't know that it's you. But when you, you and I get in our right state of mind, oh man, don't you know that we are the greatest generation of human beings that have ever existed? You have been given, and we have been given an opportunity to bring in this new heaven, this new earth, to change things, to destroy all that which is old and bring that which is new and allow the former things to pass away. But what makes you upset is that when you're getting rid of something old and allowing the old to pass away, some of y'all can't let go of the old. See, Islam is of the old world. Christianity is of the old world. All a lot of these things that y'all hold on to, that's old. And really, y'all don't need them if you start to think for yourself. And just settle down, chill, check your emotion, and just think. And you, you'll see that, that, that not only will God, your God talk to pastor so-and-so or, or, or preacher Mudflap or whoever they are that y'all listening to, your God will talk to you personally. It's in you. There's nothing that I say that ain't already in you. Everything that I say is in this brother here already. All of us have different jobs. The creation have different jobs for everybody. My job is to do exactly what I'm doing here. To help open the mind and become an administrator for this truth. And do you know why some of you are upset? Some of you are upset because of how I present this message. Do you think that the creator is dumb enough not to give his new teaching or her New teaching, this, the creation is not going to give this new teaching a beautiful, articulate, charismatic spokesman like he does the old religion. <laughs> going to give something, going to give this teaching somebody just as pretty as them suckers. And this is good for you. What they're giving to you is old. You should throw it out and spoil. Time to make you some new soup. Put some new potatoes in the pot. Some new onions in the pot. That's what you need. You need something with some nourishment and stop eating out of them cans and them and have them artificial ingredients that y'all chugging down. And that's why many of you physically are become obese. And that's just a reflection of your mental conditioning. You obese in the head. Some of you listen to how y'all talk. Y'all just go on forever. Oh, 
uh, about Jesus and y'all got you can articulate things and and we call it um, what do we call it sciencing you just sit there and grab a, a quote from the scripture and y'all can talk about that little quote from the scripture just get no beast off this stuff when that's not what it's about you cannot eat all this and don't exercise that's why you're fat because there's no exercise so now you have to take this this wisdom all these things that we know and you have to exercise them otherwise you become fat and obese and then in Christian religion you know obesity is a sin in us in the sight of God you know that right so we don't want to be like that man you know I was tired brother I was tired but the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, that came in this building and got me up off my feet. <laughs> so I know what y'all are talking about. But I want to welcome this brother. I want to welcome this brother to this ministry. I love his fire. I love his tenacity. He wants to build this thing. And, and all movements start somewhere. You didn't start where you're at. We was all microscopic. We was a sperm and we was an egg. Nothing to speak of. Your mama didn't even know she was pregnant. And so that's what we are right now. We are sperm and an egg. And in the, in, within this uh, 40 to 70 million descendants of slaves in America, you don't even know y'all getting ready to get pregnant. You don't know it yet. I'm going to work on it. He gonna work on it. We gonna work on it together. We gonna get us pregnant. And I want to say to us that this really has nothing to do with religion. All of us are on different levels. It is about having a common purpose and a common goal. I don't expect you to be like me. This brother, I open up this my videos with in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, whatever. If this brother wants to do that, that's fine and then that's that's cool. But see, I don't want him to be like me. I want him to express himself the way the creation want him to be. I don't want you to be a Talik Ibn Rock clone. Like some of these people, they want to be um, a Malcolm X clone or a Farrakhan clone or a Jesse Jackson clone. If I attempt to try to make this brother a clone like me, then he's limited to what I am. I don't want him to be limited to what I am. I want you to express that which what the creation gave to you. Because the creation gave me something. And it might not be the same. You might not have the same thing. We have different jobs. We have different ways of doing things. And that's good. Because everything in this life, even though you have lions in a pride, all the lions, many of them look the same. But if you study them, they are all different. There are no clones. The deceiver makes clones. In this world, they take DNA and they make clones. But out of the creation, which is natural, there are no clones. And every time the creation brings some type of modification, if it survives, it's for the betterment. But you cannot get a betterment if everybody is the same. And I don't want this brother to be like me. I want him to be different. Do his thing. But we want to be on the same path, having the same common purpose, same common goal. And our goal, we want to get y'all pregnant. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the bottom line. Because we need to have a new life. You need to be, like they say in religion, born again. And that's what's good. That's what's happening here at this temple. That's our reality. There's nothing mysterious. There's no virgins running around getting pregnant here. There's nothing mysterious about this rebirth or being born again. It's in the mind. It's we as a people. You should be tired of being slaves. I ain't no slave. Oh, yes, you are. Even white folks are slaves. So, so if you, if if the white folks are slaves, and many of them are awakening 
and realizing that they have been tricked and deceived, that they have been enslaved also. So if they know that they are enslaved, how can you, as a black man or woman in America, with our history, how can you dare say, I ain't no slave? Why? Because you got some rims? Because you can smoke some weed? Because they got your Negro face on television? That don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing because out of all that, you don't control nothing. You don't run nothing. Your face is not on a dollar bill. You don't control no economics because you're a slave. And a slave only exists to benefit his or her master. And I'm tired of being a slave. I'm tired of benefiting, being a benefactor to somebody else. You need to begin to all your work. And even our children. Y'all got all these children and you burying all these babies just so they can be workers for the oppressor. For those who don't love you. Don't give a damn about us. So why are you going to work and have babies so these people can continue to have a good supply of slaves? No more. And any God in his or her right mind don't want that for you. That's why I'm telling you, the creation is talking to us to bring us something new. Or you are atheists. That if you listen to me, not really. I'm spiritual too, but spiritual in a real sense. See, you can have spirits. See, for an example, first of all, in order to have a spirit, Somebody has to die. Spirit come from something that was once living. You can't get a, you can't have a spirit until something dies. And it's spiritual, ritual, worship of the spirit or worship of the dead. We go back to Kemet, that's what they was doing. Worship of the dead because they had a fear of dying and death. And that's what's keeping a lot of us black folks in the condition that we're in. Because we are, we are cowardly. We are afraid of dying and death. Because we know if we go against this vicious uh, oppressor, we know what he can do to us. We should stop fearing death. We should welcome death. Because see, life is a balance. This is a balance. You have to have death and life. It's only fiction in our reality. It is fictional to try to think about only life. Everlasting life. When in this world, our reality, there's always balance. As soon as somebody is dying, somebody is being born. As soon as somebody is born, somebody is dying. That's just our life. That's our reality. We just need to accept that. But you can live forever. How do we live forever in our reality? We live, we live forever in our reality by doing just what we're doing. Because see, this internet, this video can be immortal. As long as the internet stands, we can stand. That's why people like writing books. That's, like, that's why people want to be president and all these different things. Because that memory, that, those type of things make you immortal. And I'm telling you, and I'm going to close this out because I want my brother to say something. Right behind me is that, see, this generation, we are so special. The gift is, is given to us right now. We can be the most, we can be the most immortalized generation of black people on this planet that have ever existed since our creation. Greater than Egypt. Greater than the first blacks. Because we broke white supremacy. We broke this, this thing, this thing that has a, a grip that has done the most damage to humanity ever. You can break this cycle. Because there are those who think that it can't be broken. And it can because it's coming to us. The answer is right here. The beginning, the ending of white supremacy, the ending of this, this life that we know of. The kingdom of heaven is in you. You got the key. You just won't let it out.
because you've fallen in love with this world. But see, I don't mind because I don't like nothing of this world. I don't like their money. I don't like their macaroni and cheese. I don't like their apple pie. I don't like their wrestling. I don't like their comedy shows. I don't like nothing of this world. See, y'all do there's something about this world that y'all like. And you're holding on to it for dear life. It reminds me again. I'm sorry, brother, but I just had to add this last point. It reminds me of the story of in the Bible about Lot's wife. Because God came to Lot and his family when he was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and told his family and gave them the order, when you leave, don't look back at that place. I'm getting ready to turn up. So Lot and his family got their little stuff together and got, got started getting the hell out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot's wife, something about that place, she just couldn't got the itch. Go. Yeah, she just couldn't let it go. And so she just decided to take a little peek. I know God ain't going to see nothing. I'm going to take me a little peek. I got. And as soon as she took that little peek, y'all preachers know she was turning to a pillar of salt. Because there was... God declared Sodom and Gomorrah as evil. This is something I'm going to destroy. But there's something about it, that evil, something about that wickedness that Lot's wife liked. And y'all run around here talking about how righteous and holy and good, but there's something somewhere, something about this world that you like. And that's why y'all hold on to it for dear life. And as long as you do that, you're going to be in hell and you're going to keep your babies and future generations in hell. And you don't deserve to go nowhere else. You deserve to be right here. That's what you deserve. So when you decide that you want to stop peeking over your shoulders and loving whatever it is, maybe y'all just got this thing for strip clubs or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't know what I don't know what it is. You know, yeah. whatever it is, you know. Yeah. That that weed you took you smoked last night just man that just I just I just got to have one more hit God just I, I I would like to go with Lot and his family but I just got that was some good weed man that would it come from Columbia somewhere you just got to have something I do not want nothing to do with this place I want you I want my people of whom the creation love you are love these people don't love us. But there's something higher than them. And you have, you have the ability to break yourself away from all of this. You have the, the, the gift and the ability to bring in that which is new. And guess what? When we begin to do that, they are following. Because I'm telling you, they don't like hell either. They don't like it. But it's not up to them to bring in the new heaven and the new earth because you see what they do the thing they get something new and tear it up and mess it up and and whatever you and i are the new groundskeeper we are the new we are the ones to bring in this new thing and it has nothing to do with islam because that's there see they can't make no claim to the realities temple nobody they can't make no claim i quote from the bible i quote from the quran and stuff like that but that's because that's where we that's where we are at. But everything that I'm telling and bring you, they nobody can make no clear. Oh, that reality is temple. Oh, that, that, that that's we, we brought the norm. The creation brought you and I a special gift. Just accept it. And I'm telling you, let, start thinking for yourself. Let your mind open up. Let some of that other stuff go just for a little bit, just for a little taste. And I guarantee you, you say, wow, that Talib. He's right. It's already in you. Don't have nothing to do with me, really. Only thing I'm telling, letting you know is it's there. That's all I'm letting you know. It's there. So with that said, I want to bring to the rostrum, if we had one. I'm going to have to pretend it is a rostrum. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring to the rostrum my brother. And I, like I said, I want to officially welcome this brother. As a student at Minister, for the time being, it's not going to last long because this brother, he's, he's he's on the case. There ain't no doubt about that. You know, student, my butt. You know, he's a student. You know, he's a teacher. Uh, I want to welcome officially 
uh, to the Realities Temple Ministry, uh, my brother and my friend, uh, Andre Edmund, 69. Brother, Thank welcome you. to the Realities Temple Internet Ministry. Thank you, Tyler. Yes, sir. Um, I am Andre Edmund, 69, <coughs> student at Minister of Actions for the Realities Temple on Earth. And um, I want to get something real clear. <coughs> about what it is me and Talik are doing here. Um, I want people to understand clearly that I was raised majority of my life in a uh, racially mixed environment uh, with different ethnic groups. I grew up in a in an area where my neighbors was of all different kinds of race all my life. Um, at an early age I went to an all Caucasian school where it was only two black kids in the class and it was a girl and it was a boy and I was the boy and there was another black girl in the class and uh, from growing up and being in, in this type of environment I really didn't realize the reality of the part that racism plays and it's so common it's so common racism is so common that we really can't see it, you know. It would be just like if people went outside and they studied rocks being on the ground, it was diamonds, and we were so used to it, we wouldn't be able to see the diamonds for what they were because we were so used to seeing them all the time. Well, when it comes to, I'm not comparing racism to diamonds, I'm just using it as an example as far as uh, commonality of, uh, of things that we see so much. Uh, if you take racism out of our everyday experience in life, then our re everyday reality will be a complete shock to people. People wouldn't even know what, what the heck was going on. It would be something different. Racism plays a part in everything we do. That's right. It's in every blade of grass in our reality. I'm not going to say that all white people are racist. Yes. I'm not going to say that all white people are prejudiced. But there is going to come a time in a white person's life where them denying you your equal rights as a human being is going to be presented to them. And somehow, some kind of way, uh, uh, them treating you less of a, uh, how can I say it, an American citizen is going to benefit them. All right? At every point in their life, no matter at what point in their life they go to, it's going to, it's going to be presented to them. And majority of the time, they're going to go along with it because it's going to be in their best interest. And they might not personally like it, but they're going to go, it's going, they're going to go along with it. I want to say that to make an ultimate statement, the white man is not the black man's friend. They are our natural enemies. I don't care if if you, this person always been your friend or uh, associate or whatever. These are our natural enemies by nature. And for that reason and that reason alone, we need to be conscious of the reality of what we're going through in this country. Um, I want to say clearly up front, I got a lot of white associates, a lot of Latino associates I talk to. They know I do these videos. And I don't stop for one moment and take in consideration that they might not approve of me doing these videos. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because that don't concern me. Because I'm speaking up for what's true. I'm speaking up for the, the truth. And I'm speaking up for us, our people. And deep down inside, they know. They know this is a reality to what we're doing. But just to get off with the small, fluffy uh, talk, we in bad shape <coughs> in society. Man. We have some screwed up personal relationships amongst each other. And I'm talking about blacks. 
We have outside forces doing everything they can, even the ones that claim to be uh, 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 not racist and not prejudiced. These people have this ingrained conscience that they have to keep us separated psychologically and in every way they possibly can, keep us at a state of distrust all the time from each other. When they come into the equation or when they come into our uh, uh, a realm, in a black person's realm, where it's a group of us, they always try to find a way to keep us separated, to keep our mind going in different directions. They do not want us to be uh, on one accord. That's just what they do. You will see it happen over and over and over again. And Talik know, Talik know how this thing goes down. But a lot of blacks go along with the program. They get sucked into this idea that uh, just because a person smiles and grins in your face and uh, offer right. you these little things of uh, tokenism uh, or uh, give, give you money or give you a job that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It exists, man, and it's real. They don't want you to think it's real. See what I'm saying? And if there ever were a devil that walked the face of the earth, it would be the people that run this country, mm. the people that run the world. Because it's the devil. It's not some spirit. It's a man. And it's in the form of a group of people who is willing to do everything it is to stay in power. They will blow this whole damn world up yes, they before will. they even share any equal power. What kind of man mm. He will only be the one who got weapons of mass destruction, but can't nobody else have. Mm. If you don't want nobody else to have, what the hell are you doing with them? Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do that make sense? <clears throat> I know this video is a little bit off to the side. We ain't got that much room, <laughs> but that's all right because you still hear me. You can still see me, and you and, and I'm quite sure you can follow along with what I'm saying. Um, white. Supremacy is real. <clears throat> they do not want people from different countries to have the same access to science, to technology, yes. and all these different things because then people will wake up. They don't want people to be like in Korea where they educated themselves to the point where now they know how to make uh, uh, the atomic bomb. They know how to make these different, uh, what they call the Talik, uh, uh, um, come up with all these formulas and plans uh, from a scientific level to mm -hmm. where now they can build atomic bomb. They can split the atom. They want you to think that we're destroying the world, that we're destroying society, that we're a threat to, uh, uh, to civilization mm -hmm. by crimes and all this stuff, which they encourage. Right. But when you really get down to it, why the hell are you building all these weapons to blow things up? Ain't that something devilish? Only a devil would do something like that. You know, I mean, but I'm going to tell you this. The key thing is that blacks need to wake up and realize that it's something real uh, evil and wicked going on. Right up under our noses. And over our heads, too. It's right over our, It's all around us. It's around us. But we so used to it being there mm. that we would know how to outline the reality of it, what it is. Like I said, I don't give a damn if people that I associate with don't like what I do and what I say at all. I have had associates who just deleted me off their Facebook page. I had people made ugly, nasty remarks and blocked me so I couldn't have a chance to respond. That was their way of dry, doing a drive-by. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't care. I keep on doing it. And I treat them with respect on all levels, 
but I keep continue to do what I do. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you do this, there's an amount of respect they will have from it. But as long as you kissing out of white people's ass, deep down inside, they don't respect you. That's right. They utilize you. That's right. You get in the midst of white people. They treat all the other black people like they ain't nothing. But they use you as a toky Negro hmm. to make it appear like they're not who and what they are. You're being used. You're being them. utilized. And I had a woman today in class say, because we was it was mostly majority the black males was talking about how <coughs> with the Latinos in these uh, uh, job positions, the labor force, how they dominate the labor force, and they do everything they can to sabotage uh, our jobs uh, as black men and as black people. They sabotage. And she said, well, maybe you're reading into something that's not there. And I said, well, you know what? Um, the reason why you take that position and that opinion is because you the token Negro. Because there's something about your character and demeanor where they feel like if something go wrong or something <coughs> happens as to where you see your other people getting treated, that you're not going to resist them. You're not going to stand up for what's right, only unless it's happened directly to you. But when it's happened to your other people, then you uh, go along with their uh, protocol and mm -hmm. their plan, and you just, you know, you don't have no desire whatsoever to uh, try to stand up for your own people. It's all about you. You right where they need you to be. They want you to think as an individual. Right. They want you to feel like the only way you can make it in society is riding on their coattail and being an individual and not trying to save your other people, but to just look out for yourself. Them the same type of people that'll give you a job and invite you to their uh, social functions, but to kick your nephew, your son, or your brother, your mother in the teeth, in the gutter. You dealing with some sick people, man. Yes. You know, I'm trying to be as cordial as possible. And I'm trying to, it's hard for me to, you know, sit back and uh, try to be mellow about how I'm expressing what I'm expressing. Because I'll be wanting to go all the way off <laughs> with it too sometimes. Sometimes I do. But uh, I'm just trying to, uh, use a more uh, softer approach because sometimes when you get rough with people, they don't want to accept it. But see, in this game, they play rough, man. Hmm. And you got to be smart. Mm -hmm. The only way we can fight these people is we can't result to violence and we can't play this Chicken George attitude, Toki Negro crap because that stuff right. don't work. No, Chicken don't. George don't work. No, Uncle don't. Tom don't work neither. So um, I wanted to say another thing because uh, I almost forgot that uh, we have to learn how to see things for the way they are and study looking at things the way we want them to be. See, people got so used to the fake and the phony. Mm. And the image is things that when they see something real, they don't even know what the hell it is. We got so used to the plastic <laughs> and study seeing it for what it really is. We so used to drinking pop and all these different other uh, uh, beverages that when we taste water, they don't taste like nothing. We don't even want no water. Right. And that's the natural thing. Love fake stuff. Yeah. Love fake. Love stuff. artificial, artificial stuff, and you can't have too much of that because it's mess you up. You be wondering why 10, 15 years from now you got all these diseases and these uh, health problems, right. and health issues, because you've been ingesting all these things that's really not good for your body. This is not what we was made for, you know. I want to say uh, that uh, I'm gonna be working with Tali. I'm going to get more 
Well, actually, Talik, you know what? I got a lot of subject matter mm -hmm. I want to get together, but it's some things I need to work out before I started to uh, really get my feet wet and get out there and really started doing these videos. I want to get blog talks together. I want to do blog talks. That's what I want to do. This is what good. This is what brother Talik is good at doing these videos. And I mean, he do some stuff that just right off the, right off the. It's, I mean, he's coming right off his head, rolling right off. He don't need no uh, analogs or nothing like that. He just it rolls right off his head. It's deep in him. That's how I know it's real. I want to be able to do blog talks. I want to set up interviews. I want to ask people questions. I want to get a better understanding of each individual person and where their mind is at. And then we'll work from there. And um, We're going to get that done. We're going to be working on this. We're going to do everything you can. We're going to do this. I'm going to do this to the day I die, man. I've been understanding this type of thing as far as back I can remember. I always question. I was When I was five years old, I always wanted to know why come the big hand on the clock go faster than the little hand. <laughs> and and other, the average person take that for granted when they see that. But I was wanting to know why that was the way it was. So I'm naturally a curious person. Not nosy. I just want to know how things are. I want to know the internal uh, 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 reality of everything and why things are the way they are. So at this point, you know, I'm just going to touch up on some a little slow, but we're going to be doing some more uh, material while Talik here is visiting in Chicago. Um, we're going to be meeting with Brother Harvey tomorrow. Yes, sir. And we're going to uh, try to get something done. We're going to also be uh, visiting another brother. Uh, who is trying to do his thing, and he goes by the name uh, Rick Ryder or Roy Ryder. You know the name. Well, anyway, Mr. Ryder. Mr. Ryder. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to pronounce his name wrong. He might get mad, and he seemed like a brother that don't take no crap off nobody. <laughs> But at the same time, I could tell he got a good heart. Yes. I listen to him and talk to him. And I uh, if I can really read him that he, he's, he's a guy with a good heart. And them the type of people we need. Yes. We need people to be a part of what we're doing here, man. Yes, yes. That's what we need. This ain't about me or about Tali keeping Rod. <clears throat> he only planting seed, man. We all know what's going on, but too many of us are scared. We scared Negroes. We scared. We rather smoke reefer, drink alcohol, watch TV, watch baseball, watch basketball, and keep our mind off of what's really going on. Right. As long as we do that, it ain't going to be no change. Things going to be the same. And the white man sitting back laughing at us. Thinking of himself, we got these guys uh, uh, heading south when they should be heading north, and that's where it is. That's where it is right now. Everybody's completely defocused on where they need to be focusing on. Where is African Americans going to be in the year three thousand? Mm. Now, people, the average person is going to say, well, that's another thousand years from now. Why would I be worried about that? You should be worried about that because mm. we're going to be exempt. If you look at all the African countries where Africans or people of African descent, get I'll tell you what you do. You get you a World Almanac book. And first, you identify all the countries that are predominantly African. And you look at the mortality rate, and you realize the life expectancy of these people of African descent is, you got certain places, they 38 years old, that's your mortality rate. Mm. That's, that's the old life expectancy is, 38 years old. You see a lot of them under 60. You see a lot of them under 50. 
that's because of AIDS and all these different uh, uh, ills and illnesses and, and people dying in these countries over stuff with a public aid card or, or with some type of general uh, with, with a state uh, what do they call it, uh, Brother Talik? Uh, with some type of uh, aid card, mm -hmm. medical card, you just take one shot and it's gone. If white people really cared about other people in other countries, this wouldn't be happening. This wouldn't be going on. Mm -hmm. They don't give a damn. Why are people paying for medical? Why do people have to pay to live, mm -hmm. to be healthy? That should be free. That's that that should be something that's free. Then they come up with all these job turkey reasons about how we gotta pay to have the scientists do this and how to pay to have the scientists do that. That's a bunch of crap, man. You gotta understand what you're dealing with. You gotta ask those type of questions. Them the questions that you really need to ask. Not your friend, not your brother, your mama, yourself. Why is it that way? And don't be satisfied with some half-baked answer to it. You got to really dig deep down in yourself and ask, is this really right? But at this point, this is all I have for now. Okay. I will be uh, getting some things together. And uh, you will be seeing more. But like I said, I want to get them blog talks together. We're going to get them together. That way you sit down yourself and you can get your voice heard. And uh, we can make it happen if you really try. This is just one angle. It's doing these YouTube and these Daily Motion videos. That's just one wheel on a car. That's just one wheel on a vehicle. We got to do things in different ways. We can't just have one arm and expect us to operate like a person who got two arms and two legs. You understand what I mean? I'm just using that example. So I am Andre Detman, 69, student right. Minister of Action for the Reality Simple on Earth. I'm going to give it back to uh, Talik, and uh, he will be closing out in his usual fashion. Thank you, Brother Talik. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad that, glad that you are. Uh... Decided to come and join us. Well, that's it, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, nothing fancy. Uh, just hope that uh, you took in all this and not only uh, in your taking in of this information, but I hope that uh, if you do not join and help this uh, ministry, join and help somebody. Somebody is doing Somewhere. something Damn. to help us out of this horrid condition. And with that said, until next time, and uh, like I said, I uh, hope that you enjoy what, what else we have to offer uh, while we are here in Chicago. And uh, that, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Yeah. And respect you.